Well, it's been a while. It has been a long while, but we are finally live once again. Welcome, one and all, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another installment of Wrist Shot Week. I just want to say hi to all of you in the chat. I see Megan, Philip, Bonaventure, Jean-Claude. Have a superb afternoon with the boys out fishing. I hope you have lots of patience. Uh, Paul, I see Junior Johnson. Soleil watches. Please, can you pronounce, can you, can you spell out, phonetically spell your name out? It'll be great for me to know the name. Uh, underachieving watch collector, I see Raymond, uh, Michael R. Who else? Dr. Bob, Mark. Welcome, Mark. George, I saw Mena from Japan. I saw Forben. Yeah, welcome, ladies and gents. Let me know if you can hear me. Comment one or A or two or whatever you like in the chat. And let's get this show on the road. It's been quite a while, got to say. It's been, a long, it's been a long time. But it's good to be back. And uh, I'll briefly run through what happened. It was supposed to just be a, a couple of weeks off. And then I got put on a medication. And it's sort of uh, the side effects were quite <laughs> great. Five by five, 42A1. Okay, thank, that's great. You can hear me. <laughs> it's good to know. Thanks, ladies and gents. Uh, there's so many. Where's the South African bloke, Julian? I don't know. It's so good to have you all here. It's been yeah, it's been a long, long time. I see Carl and Moose Man, 121, click, bezel, Jeffrey. It's just the chat's going ballistic. Um, yeah, it's been a long time, but it's good to be back. And I've really enjoyed the the break because it's, you know, helped me reconnect with watches a bit more and have a bit more of a fresh perspective. I haven't looked at watches for like two days. Should I say, n you know, nothing work-related to watches. So it's really good. Just get back into it now, and there's such a cool variety of pieces on the show. Uh, don't worry, we'll get to them. Basically, every, everything you would want in a, in a show, it's all there. Okay, so let's start with the poison for the evening. Again, I don't recommend this to anyone who is underage, but uh, you know, this channel is turning into a this live show is turning into a whiskey tasting series. Yeah, Forbin, medicated ID go. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I've had been on the pill for what three weeks now, four weeks. So it's kind of in my system. But yeah, I might be a bit rocky. My liver is taking a hit. This is definitely not helping the liver, but hey, you only live once. All right, so uh, let's start. So I, before the show began, I had a bit of a taste of the Macallan again. And this, I can't, whoops, come back. This, I would not recommend. Macallan Gold, uh, double cask. It tastes like lighter fluid. To me, it does. Okay. Uh, but... There's a silver lining next to it. Would recommend the Glenlivet Caribbean Reserve. So that's what I'm drinking tonight. Don't know about everyone else. And the Smith's uh, Commando is on display. Let's get that on the screen. Um, on the pull. Yes, Hans. I'm going to be making a few blunders for the first you know, 20 minutes as the caffeine hits the brain. Three cups on the pull. So it's a Saturday. You've got to go Commando on a Saturday. You know That was the, uh, the running joke earlier. And all the rest of you here. Absolute pleasure having you. It's going to be a cool show. Got to say, the variety is just as impressive as we normally see, and lots of surprises too. The first watch that we'll have a look at, it'll make sense. Um, can I have a sip of the Macallan? Sure thing, Raymond. I wish I could send some through. Honestly, it's just not. It's it's just not refined. You know, it's it's. I like the taste of whiskey. It's nice to pick up the notes of vanilla, toffee, everything else. This doesn't have it. It just goes straight through. There's no aftertaste. Doesn't sit. Glen Livet, Glen Morangy, you're always in for a treat. So this Caribbean has a has a banana smell on the nose, which is amazing. Uh, and then aftertaste, oh, it's amazing. It's very spicy. It's cool. Got to say, it's good. Anyway, this is not a whiskey tasting show. <clears throat> I've spent the last two weeks while medicated enjoying the Commando. And it's so weird, you know, wearing a watch that you collaborated with and trying to come to terms with how it all you know, came together. It's a, it's an outlier. It's a really strange piece, but it's a cool daily wearer. I've got to say, those hands kind of have this confidence to them. It makes the wearing experience pretty nice. So, yeah, on the original bracelet, we're going to see another one just now, and or should I say, by the end of the show, and you'll have a laugh because it's compared to quite an interesting piece in the the horterology segment. Okay, so that's what I'm wearing. That's what I'm drinking. Let's get started with a really cool watch and. Uh, we do have a few pieces that we believe are going to be phased out and ones that are going to creep up in value. And this is an example of one. So I see the, the, the Chidge, first time joining live. Pleasure having you. We've had an influx of new people over the last couple of weeks, or a couple of days, actually. It's been ridiculous. But to all of you who are new time subscribers and who have sent in your watches for the first time, 
I hope you enjoy the show. We've been doing, I think this, this is episode 24. <laughs> so I don't know uh, if anything new comes up, but uh, no, I'm not pregnant, Megan. The pill, uh, the pill is helping me out there. Better safe than sorry. Hmm. Contraceptives. What a good joke. Uh, so, yeah, I've got to catch up with the chat. There's lots going on. I've just got to get my head in the game. I'll take another hit of the coffee. And you come for the watches, but stay for the chat, as most of you know. Coffee down the hatch. I'll be with you in a moment. So, oh, it'd be so weird trying to prep videos while, you know, partially incapacitated. It's been a, it's been a good time. I see Alex Ramos joining us and Hans and DVD arrives tomorrow. Eric says, I don't know if you're talking about, about me. Right. Uh, again, if you'd like to get my attention, tag me in the chat, hashtag at ID guy, one of the two. I'll be able to see it. It comes up in red. So I'll be able to see the highlight and I'll get your question, whatever it is. And we'll have a good time. So let's start with the date just. This is a 41 mil, like nickname it, the, the Wimbledon date, date just. I think it was introduced around it was either 2009 or 2010, 2011. I, it's, it's been a while. But it is, it's one of those outliers. And it's easily recognizable, which I kind of like. And we're going to have a look at an Air King just now, which is another piece we've, we've featured before. But I do really, I wouldn't, how do, how do I say this? It's like, the, the balancing between the date window and the baton at the quarters is really interesting. And it's something you can see from a distance, which is really nice. You know, it's almost like if this watch is flashed on, on a screen or if it's on the wrist uh, in the corner of the room, it's very identifiable by that quarter baton. As for the applied Romans, though, that's something that is either a love it or hate a thing. But it's a pretty fitting fitting setting and is uh, on the putting green, it looks like. Uh, I don't know if this is just putting or if this is actually a course that he's on. But uh, yeah, I got to enjoy a sports watch in its setting. You've got the green surrounds around the Romans there and the green grass, and it's it's pretty slick. Curtis, good to have you here, sir. Yes, we're going to feature your GMT later on, which is going to be a blast. Uh, yeah. And I don't know what the guys are chatting about. It's, it's cool. Everyone's having a debate amongst themselves, and that's what's the joy of these shows. I can't believe it's been like three weeks, and we're back at it. Um, Craig says, 9 o'clock baton messes with me. It is perplexing, and you have to ask, what would the watch be like without the date, uh, the Cyclops, in the way? Uh, yeah, it's a peculiar watch, but it's one. I'm, I'm wondering if they ever made a fluted bezel variant of this. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they did, or maybe I'm just completely wrong. Are oh, they applied? George, by the looks of things, they are painted on. Depen yeah, it looks, it looks like it's a flat. I haven't actually had a proper... We've featured this watch a few times in the past, I think. And, yeah. you know, what's, what's, um, what's amazing to me... Hold on a second. What am I doing? And nice watch, but we haven't featured the cover photo. Oh, geez. George, where are you, George? This was the watch that was supposed to be highlighted first. I almost missed it. That was that was silly of me. Okay, let's talk about the cover photo watch. Uh, we've been running the show now for how long? Eight minutes, and we're we're finally in. So, uh, the Breguet Marine Bucher edition. Now, the reason why this watch is featured is because it is. You just don't see them. There's only uh, George told me there's between thirty and fifty of them in the world. I think, according to the the retailer, and this is not on the wrist. But it's a watch that we never see, and it deserves a good highlight, I think, because the, the Marine, to me, is, is such a fascinating piece in the Breguet line. Sorry that I didn't feature it in the beginning. That was, that's the alcohol, the coffee, and the drugs, I guess. So what about it? It's titanium. It's got, you know, Bucher Blue, Blue Dial, Blue Waves. And it's, I, I've mentioned, I have spoken about the, the reference. It's a 5517, I believe, if that's, that is the reference number. And it's, you know, when, it, when we're talking about a marine chronometer, that's where Breguet really cut their chops as a brand as, as they evolved. You know, next to Ulysse Nardin, Breguet was very well known for its marine chronometers and used on sail ships throughout the Napoleonic era and onwards. And I love how they've taken that concept and applied it to this watch. So it's very formal. Very dress oriented. We've got a sect, a dial. We've got uh, just the finishing is incredible. But then you have all the traits that you would want to see from a Breguet. You've got the straight lugs. You've got the the screws to lock in the the strap. You've got the gorgeous coin edging. Even the crown guards represent a propeller on a ship. 
and just like bizarre things, uh, the typical traits of reggae. You've got Romans, you've got uh, reggae hands, you've got, of course, the, the guillaché, and the, the 25, the date windows at a peculiar angle. It's kind of, uh, what would you say, ob oblong? I don't know. Still getting into it. And then he's taking a few more shots. This in direct light. He says it is difficult to photograph. <laughs> Paul saying, Palette of Fisherman's Friends, go fuck me. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a tin. Check it out. I thought it's pretty cool to have a tin so we, there's like an audible uh, sound when the, when the fishermen's eventually come out. My unofficial sponsor. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. This, to me, is <clears throat> one of the highlights of the show because we, we don't see it often and because it's just – it shows that Breguet is not afraid to make their pieces very modern-looking but still tie in with their, their traditional approaches. Just simple things like the, the rotor matches the, uh, the, the wheel of a ship. And uh, yeah, I love it. It's, it's a fascinating watch. I think the Marine is one of the most interesting in this you know, horse horology segment of sports dress watches. Um, yeah, and of course, they're all raised Romans. I didn't mention that either. Just some three-dimensionality to it, uh, some depth. Love the Brega hands. It's a win, absolute win. And again, these are very rare. I don't, we don't know the official number. I, I looked online and I couldn't find anything substantial, but there aren't many of these, and you can only pick it up at the, the Breguet uh, retailer. So fascinating watch. It's not on the wrist, which kind of goes against the whole law of wrist shot week, but you know, you have to break the rules sometimes. Awesome piece. George, thanks for this. I think we've featured this now for the last, what, two minutes or so, three minutes? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There are very few that come close to this, but there are some very good contenders. Let me tell you that much. Right, so we jump to Ants, Wimbledon, Datejust. <clears throat> I'm already losing my voice. I'm going to hit some water and get back in. I haven't seen you in the chat. Again, tag me in the chat. If you want to get my attention, I can answer your questions, whatever you like. Uh, okay. So I see that Forbin says the Breguet dial almost looks like um, upholstered blue leather. It's stunning. Gloss finish to it. Uh, let's see. Neferion said that said the Joker to the thief. Are we talking about all along the watchtower? Um, yeah, yeah. The coffee's getting to the brain. I'm starting to think. I see Flip and Zippo, Neville. So many more of you joining that I haven't been able to say hi to. But uh, I'll try my utmost to keep the attention on the chat while running through all that's going on here. So and beautiful piece. Next, we're jumping to Bob with a Breitling Chronomat. Now, this represents the Swiss Air Force team. Mm -hmm. It's useful that it's on the subdial there. And the chronomat is a piece that, it's again, we've, we've spoken about this before, but how Breguet, being under new management now, is starting to really come into their own. And they're making pieces more, I would say, true to their past, but also pieces that seem to be a lot more desirable from a price perspective, many other factors there. Of course, this is the more traditional model with the most peculiar... I don't know, what kind of font would you call this? Aliens font on the bezel, which is a love it or hate it thing. It's, uh, it's bizarre because you also see it on the dial. I didn't notice that. It's also at the, at the markers there. But it's an awesome piece. I think one of the, the key features of Breguet is the whole integrated bracelet that connects up here. They always deal with flat, or should I say straight end bracelet connections. And there's another shot of it here somewhere here. There we go. It's a bit of a better perspective. They really are interesting watches, and I mean, they're great pieces you can pick up now. The market is flooded with them, and you can get them for great prices. Really interested in seeing what Breguet does in the future, because they've brought out some amazing modern chronomats. They're jumping to unisex pieces, which is also fantastic. It's so good to get more ladies into the hobby, I think. Uh, you know, this is very much like a 97% male-dominated sector, so it's good to see that. We're starting to you know, scale watches down, introduce precious metals. You know, I love what they're doing with bullet bracelets, speaking specifically about Breitling. Tasty Chrono Beast, Jeremy says, yeah, it's awesome. It is awesome. And Mark's mentioning, loving your Instagram, uh, Dear Artifact. Tell you what, Dear Artifact, you're going to be coming up soon. I'll be featuring you again in the chat. If anyone doesn't follow Dear Artifact on Instagram, do it. Uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating place. Instagram, for me, is, is such an inspiring place. You can learn so much more about watches, about the culture, about ownership through it. It's amazing. It really is such a, an easy, quick, uh, accessible place for anyone to experience more and to learn more. Okay. I don't know. So now we've got Sound of Silence by Eric. Uh, I don't know if it's 
is it is it me that i'm going uh, please don't tell me i'm losing signal or whatever else anyway bob gorgeous piece it's a it's a very peculiar watch but it's so true to breitling's language its position and its awesome piece on the wrist too gotta say it's a monster so we've been chatting now for over 15 minutes and we're still on b this is gonna be a long one uh, buckle in everyone gotta say okay next we're jumping to bonaventure which is who was in the chat a second ago i think i saw him a moment ago um ep life you're not late don't worry we're only 15 minutes in pleasure having you here and everyone else okay so Junghans, Meister, reference, <clears throat> hold on to your hats. Number 027 slash 3503.00. It's, uh, it's a mouthful. It's, if you can remember this off by heart, then you should be a mathematician, I think. But it is, if we've spoken about, about the simplicity of Junghans design, max build design approaches, and it's, it's a love it or hate it. I think in many ways it's this one I think is very pure and true to the the approach of the German aesthetic it speaks to the 40s I would say let you know 30s 40s yeah it's gorgeous this photo is also stunning too I should I should commend everyone for the photography because we're going to see some amazing just beautiful shots but that's kind of a given a lot of these shows that photography is just out of this world still amazing shot and capture I see a comment by, oh, I'm going to try and get your name right, Mriu Vyutz, uh, first time live, pleasure having you here. Can you confirm or deny that the Daytona has the worst history for a watch? <laughs> but never been to space, Paul Newman doesn't even want it, thanks. That's a cool question. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I like. It keeps me it keeps me on the ball. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when we compare the Daytona to the Speedmaster, you know, they all have their own, their pros and cons. The Speedmaster is iconic those in quotations should we move to the next watch or it was hold it on here for a while speedmaster is iconic for its its space missions and its function and i mean you can't take that away from them for sure uh, but then their design of the dial is not original to them uh, rodania and the geometer was the first watch that actually had that so amiga pretty much bought that style and made it their own but as far as two functional instruments, the Speedmaster is head and shoulders. The Daytona was you know, essentially a fashion accessory that became famous because of media, because of publications, because of celebrity status. But then again, astronauts also very much a celebrity status of the time. So it's, it's a toss, you know, up, up and about. Um, they do have their own merits in different ways. The aesthetics of those original Daytonas are pretty incredible. And I think... Funny enough, we're going to have a look at some cool Daytonas in a second from Bud the Stud. That should be fun. Okay, uh, I got a motor on. Love this, Young Hans Bonaventure. I hope I said your name right. And to everyone else here, good grief, uh, you guys are just chatting away in the in the chat, and I'm just I'm just speaking to myself. It's all good. It's all good. All right, moving on next to Brian or Neferion, who is in the chat, and this was interesting, but he did not give me the name of the watch, <clears throat> so I had to. Try and zoom in and try and get it right. So it's a Diffikind. Diffikind. No. I have no idea what the brand name is. Someone help me out. But what makes this piece cool? It's bronze. It is, this is quite special as it's, it's a tour watch at the moment. So I'm guessing it's going between reviewers. Yeah, George, you got to laugh. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't even know the brand. But it's 36 millimeters in bronze, the Miota 9015 gorgeous brushed dial and it's pretty fascinating you don't see 36 millimeter dive watches today so it's good for the smaller wristed um defeat yeah, I know, I, yes moose man i think that's how you spell it i really could not tell you but it looks like it to me um <clears throat> gonna gonna hit the coffee some call you the gangster of love eric they do the same with me uh, it does look bigger though mark you're right that maybe could be because of the bezel. It could be because of the, the lengthened uh, lugs. Nice looking piece though. Great balance on the dial all, all around. But bronze as a material, you know, bronze is, hmm, I have my, uh, my pet peeves. I do love, the one watch I do love in bronze is the Oris Carl Brashear. Just because Carl Brashear is a legend and it's such a cool story. I mean, there's a movie about him. And uh, if you look at the history of just what he managed to do, freaking amazing that that for me is the coolest bronze watch purely because of the name assigned to it it's all about celebrity status what a laugh 
Uh, Philip has mentioned, thanks for the Philip. It's the, the Difficano Barracuda. Okay. Okay. Has it gone green yet? <laughs> It'll be very, you know, very soon. Skin contact. And the main preference when it comes to, to any kind of watch that has a, uh, a brass finish, bronze, should I say, it needs to have a stainless steel back, stainless steel case back. Because I mean, otherwise you're going to, your, your wrist is going to go green and it's going to smell and yeah. Okay. I've got to move on. Brian, awesome piece. Nice presence. Great to see divers in 36 mil. I featured a lot of them in the past, but only the vintage pieces. Manuel saying it's it's a Kickstarter. Thank you. So anyone on Kickstarter, look up the the Difficant. What did I call it? The Dif the Difficano Barracuda. Try my best. Moving to Bruno next. This is cool. So he sent in the photo, basically saying two Hamiltons in one picture, and I had to put two and two together and remember it's Alexander Hamilton. I'm not from America, so. Uh, Got to give me some brownie points there. Automatic 38 mils, stunning little field watch. And, you know, I do love how the field watch is so divided between, you know, the United Kingdom and the American approach, where this 24 hour dial is very much what we would see. And, you know, the British way, or should I say that the European way is a lot more focused on a few elements. Oh, Musman, thank you. Pronounce it Defijano. That, does that sound better? Thank you, Moose Man. Uh, so 121 says, report to the line cookie, men of honor. Makes me, oh, yeah, I love it, love it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the quote. Yeah, it's such a cool film. It's great. But notice the whole character development of it is a bit strange, though, if you try and break it down. I mean, what was the name of the, the sergeant? Who's sergeant? No, Master Chief. He was just, he was just a, a dick the whole way through, and there was no real, like, respite and it kind of bugs you as as far as character development goes you know it doesn't feel like he's trying to build him up in any way but in his, but then he does know that he is the best so it's it's funny watch it uh, i think it's called men of honor that's the name of the film nice needle tips raymond says yeah gotta love it i mean this is just exactly what we would see from an elgin a11 right yeah it's awesome it should be dji not she oh geez yeah i'll, I'll never get it right but uh, yeah, nice piece. I love the shot too, Bruno. It's really cool seeing this in its uh, natural form, should I say. Two Alexanders, sorry, two Hamiltons in one place. Come back. Okay. Happy weekend, Chaz. Pleasure having you here. Thanks for joining in and uh, to you as well. So cool. Wonder of Watches, I saw you a second ago. Welcome. I think I saw Thomas Burnett as well and, and so many more of you. It's just, <laughs> it's ballistic. The chat is hard for me to keep up with, but uh, it's fun. The coffee, coffee is helping my brain. Hamilton seems confused currently. No true identity in the zombie brand. Forwin. Uh, so just speaking about, because they're very, they try and stick very much to their field watch in all accounts with all pieces that they, they work with, right? Um. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I've, I haven't looked at their line completely, but I know their navigation watches can be a hit or miss sometimes. The field watch is, is very much... Yeah, he just had a preview mark. He did. Uh, this magic mouse. I need to buy a new one. It's, it's broken. Um, but yeah, it's true. I mean, this is the one you jump on. But at the same time, I'd like to look more into the brand, though. I think I'll put it there. Anyone else? Have a look and uh, enjoy Hamilton. I think the field watches are a win. When it comes to starting out in the hobby, a field watch is golden. Okay, so let's get to the, one of the main hits, which I loved. So this comes in from Bud the Stud. He's normally here. He's normally watching. And he says, two Daytonas in two weeks. So he's got one that's going to be a safe queen and one that he's going to wear. And he also mentioned that he's not a gold guy. He doesn't like gold. I'm also not much of a solid. I mean, it's, it's a bit much in this you know, presentation. Solid gold, but with a green dial. The Daytona being you know, identified as a trophy watch in many ways, at least that's how I define it, with the Rolex green. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It's pretty heavy, not just vision, not just in weight, but <laughs> in you know, uh, visually, it's it's very heavy. Yeah, heavy shot. Michael says, thirty six k gold right there. That's funny. I'll take the left one. Yeah, you know, it's pretty nice and a gorgeous shot too. We get to appreciate the uh, the dynamism. And we're not done with these yet. We're gonna have a look at platinum day dates and all sorts later on. And I did see a comment from hold on from Muru. I'm gonna botch your name again. Sorry, man. So many different watch and design. But have you ever changed your mind over the watch design? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like it's like with anything. It's good to get away from it and come back to it and have a look, try and reassess. 
it's good to listen to other opinions too, of course. I see Tao joining us. Tillman, pleasure having you here. Welcome. Uh, yeah, hence no cold. Uh, Megan says, I think the Hamilton Field Watchers have become overpriced. Have they gone up in price? Have they done the Seiko Prospect? Come on, Magic Mouse. Have they done the Seiko Prospects thing and, and up their prices, jacked up the prices because of demand, because of new movements? I'd like to know if anyone knows the, the group. Some awesome pieces, though. Jeez, I can't tell you. Anyway, hitting the coffee again. The guy's getting into his stride now. We are how long? Uh, 25 minutes in. The coffee, it's amazing. The coffee and the whiskey hit, hit this equilibrium, and it's, it evens out, and it's great. Superb heavy hitters to have a look at. L literally heavy hitters, you know? Uh, gold and green is impressive. It is. For, for someone who doesn't appreciate gold, I think many of us here find these way too gaudy for what they are. But then with the gold accent, it does speak to the trophy nature of the Daytona. And that's very much where it has gone at this point. This is the epitome of the Daytona now, I would say. It's not, it's not a watch that you wear as a daily sports watch anymore, to the majority. It's, it's just, it's a safe queen for most people. It's an achievement, and that's kind of where it ends, which is pretty sad considering... Uh, you know, the history of it and it being used as a, an instrument. There's going to be an awesome watch we're going to look at later that kind of mirrors the the approach of the Daytona made by Hamilton, would you believe? Okay, so, Bud the Stud, thank you. Jumping to Ben. And this is an awesome piece. Really awesome. It's a bi-compax, Baltic and worn and wound partnership. Uh, salmon dial, you can't go wrong. I think it's it's a really stunning model. This came in recently, I think. Golden, yeah, golden green says Rolex for sure, Megan. I agree. A little highlight of red really pops in the green dial. It does. 121, I agree too. Um, okay. Again, the chat's going ballistic. Please tag me. If you want me to see your comment, please tag me in the chat with an at or a hashtag, and I'll be able to get to it much easier and just, you know, riff it off as, as the comment comes in. Uh, it seems the Daytona on the right is still wrapped. It is. Uh, it is, Zahira. The, uh, this one is most definitely going to be locked up and kept and this one's going to be worn i mean i love that i'm of the same kind of mentality that if you are going to i mean gold is very soft if you're going to pretty much daily or weekly wear this piece <clears throat> it'd be nice to have one that's clean untouched that you can put away and it's questioning just how long these are going to last i think these ones again jumping back to the daytona again these watches really got their uh demand up thanks to the john mayer interview with with hodenki this the second part when he was talking about the white gold and the you know and these are now the demand for these are climbing unfortunately i think the way watches are going as much as it's fantastic that we're getting more people into the hobby everything is just jacking up like 50 percent over what you would expect and the prices are just yeah i've seen these baltics on ebay for 25 exactly in Ferion. any collaboration project hell this this little smith's commando they're going like uh, the Everests. They're going on eBay for like 750 pounds. It's nuts. Cannot believe. I should actually address it a bit more later on because I've had lots of requests about the watch and uh, it's very difficult because I'm not running the show. I can't, I can't really help with, with orders and all of that. But uh, yeah, just watch prices in general going crazy. Um, why spend 50K when you can drop 100K for two, Andrew? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Discount. Also, just love the texture of this, this Baltic with uh, you know, the dial. How would you express, or how would you explain this dial? It's kind of like sand or rock. Or I, don't, I don't know. The finish is nice. Brushed. I, I do also really enjoy how they've arranged the dial. You know, no heavy printing, nothing superfluous. It's very balanced. This is a bit peculiar, though. This, this, these subdial hands are a bit, I know, offset. Maybe is that, is that the approach or is that just, I don't know. I don't know. Who am I to criticize? Yeah, it's a cool looking piece. Love the overhanging seven, the serif there, and the open six. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice model. Ben, thank you for this. Moving on next to see the canoe with, we were talking about field watches. Here is the European edition of the, the Hamilton that we just saw a second ago. Timor is has just been uh, picked up again, rebought as a brand. Now Timor was a part of the the Dirty Dozen, uh, World War II watches, of course. This has been scaled up. I think it's like thirty eight mils. I think it's a Kickstarter project that they've just re recaptured, and uh, it's awesome. 
on a paracord strap. I mean, that's the way. Right, some good questions coming in. Let's see what's going on. Uh, limited edition, both, pity because it's an awesome salmon dial. Yeah, I agree, Wanda. Q Maestro, uh, those gold day toners make me feel like a plebeian. Yep, me as well. Me as well with my uh, my coffee and my water in the room. Uh, when will this price balloon burst? Ever? Soon? As demand goes up, so prices will go up. It's just inevitable. Unfortunately, it is very sad. Alex saying new Zenith or Silver Snoopy? The Silver Snoopy Award. Good question, Alex. If it was me, I like them both for different reasons. You know, I, th I think the Silver Snoopy has the aesthetics that I enjoy, but the Zenith has the movement. I, I love, I do love that, that when you get to that meeting point of a great watch with a great movement, a stellar movement that you know is just leagues ahead of its competition. Uh, the Snoopy is a three, is a, not a three, two, one, a, a one. What is it? 3861, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Just someone type in yes, 3861. And let me know. If that's the case, then I'll take the Snoopy. Uh, yeah. Catching up here, we see Andrea saying dial finish is actually called Teenager's Face. <laughs> that's so good. I love it. Thank you for that, Andreas. Uh, Baltic stippled texture, Forbin. Good point there. And then we're talking about Timor again uh, as a brand. Let's see. Love the Timor as well as the Vertex. Yeah, they're great. They really are great. It's nice to see the Dirty Dozen coming back, back to life. And it's a fully brushed case. It's a good size. You've got the sub dial there, big, broad military arrow hand. I think it's almost an exact replica of the originals from the, from the 40s. Just the size has been uh, pushed up. Of course, it doesn't have radium paint and the movements are different. Uh, Curtis says when he sells the safe queen Daytona, it will uh, more than pay for one he wears. Can you say free Daytona? I mean, that's it, right? It's it's the sad uh, reality. I picked up the code 41, day, day, for, hold on, day 41, awesome watch. Code 41, I saw an advert for that the other day, and I thought they were ripping into the code 1159, you know, the, the AP model. It's pretty funny. I see Brent joining us. Welcome. Okay, so moving on. Cedar Canoe, awesome piece. Love it. Got to love a field watch. To Charles next. Oh, I love this piece. This is this is just class from back in the day. So it's called a. <clears throat> let's get this right. <laughs> I'm not going to get it right. Quarter bear, quarter bear, something like that. Uh, sports. So it's quarter bear sport. <clears throat> His grandfather's watch. It's the reference A S one two five zero. Adolf Schilt bumper rotor movement similar to early Omega. So we know the old school bumper movements, that's the charm, but there's just so many aspects to this piece that I, that I adore, and it's really easy to pick them up, right? I'm just going to leave this on the screen for a second while I hit the coffee again. Yeah, I was talking about Code 41. There's some interesting pieces. I saw an advert just today, actually, a couple of hours ago. I get you know those recommended ads on, uh, on Instagram and stuff, <clears throat> and it's a nice-looking watch, very conceptual. And uh, do I think they also play around with with skeletonizing and everything there? So what does this watch have that gives it so much charm? The voice is already going, hitting the water. Uh, what I dig about it is, and this is a question, <clears throat> <clears throat> fisherman's friends, come to my rescue. Uh, strawberry, I really sorry, cherry or is it black currant? Have to know. Um, it's cherry. Good luck. Whenever I pick up black current, there's always bad luck involved. So what this watch has, and a subject that I've wanted to address, is beautification. Watches just aren't, so many watches just aren't beautiful anymore. I want to make a series about it, focusing on brands like Cartier and others, where the whole aspect of beautification has kind of been thrown out of the window in favor of functionalism. Is that good? Does that make sense? Uh, you know, watches don't have these beautiful step lugs anymore. They don't play around with details on the dial when it comes to rotating. They don't have these gorgeous cursive typefaces. Brands are very much making what they think will sell. And a lot of that is just pure utilitarian based, you know? Yeah. Great vintage lungs. The chidge, the lungs are very nice. Got to say old lungs or good lungs. Um, so here is saying Cord Cordoba is a known vintage brand, a classic. Yep. Chai Town from, from California. <laughs> Hope my email came through. Maybe it did. I, I don't know. I don't think it did, Chai Town. I stopped the selection of pieces, I think, uh, this morning. So if your submission was late, it'll be carried over to the next show. And Megan's talking about Code 41. I'd like to have a look at them in a bit more detail. 
watch champion but what is beauty are you talking about details yeah watch champion that's yeah beautification in the sense of <clears throat> how do they address individual elements on the watch and like okay let's what's a good example here um let's go to the daytonas the daytonas with when we look at their lugs with their 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 uh, crown guards if anyone who's just joined we've had to look at some cool daytonas there's nothing it's all functional based re realistically right there's nothing that says filigree or it's it's just it's just there it has its purpose and that's it it, it meets its purpose where with this piece uh oh come back with this piece we have there's no reason why there needs to be stepping on the lugs it just adds a little bit of dynamism so yeah the word beautification i just i mean in the sense of how do they address the individual parts and i feel like it's kind of been lost if we look at the older pieces of course, some of the filigree is a little bit unnecessary, but then what is necessary? You know, it's it's good. The utilitarian cheap to produce number station. That's exactly right. I agree wholeheartedly. Utilitarian means it's simple to make. It's it's easy on the wrist, easy to wear. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. Uh, Shy Town saying the Rolex date just as beautification. We're going to have a look at some beautiful ones later, and I agree, especially when we look at things like fluting on the bezels and all of those factors. Okay, uh, Charles, this is great. Let's have a look at the movements. Here's our old school little bumper movement at least i think it's a bumper movement is it based on it i can't where is the bumper it should be on there it is so that's it's a crazy little function that's the end of the rotor up here in the corner and this rotor basically does a what do i say about 180 what's 270 degree rotation and it basically bangs back and forth unadjusted old school it's a real charmer grandfather's watch is always a pleasure we can have a look at some more of those later on deco design touch yeah i mean that's that's kind of where we draw the line once deco period i mean the 50s was very much a revival of deco motifs okay but uh you know once that disappeared the 50s was a strange time man i mean they went from beautification to utility and to furthering their technology and all of that okay charles great piece moving on to chris funny enough how cool is this we're having a look at a Longines military. This is a Marine National, I think. This is what they've called it. And it's newly, it's a newly re released piece. I don't know if this is vintage or modern. It looks too looks too new to be vintage. But uh, yeah, Longines are doing some, they are one of the best in the business with these reissues, I think. They've really gone to town with their back catalog. Now, of course, these watches were probably sized at 36 or even 33 mils back in the day. These have been scaled up that can affect the proportions of the watch and the balance sadly which is quite a pity you know they don't scale up the crowns right or the lugs are just way too long it's nice to keep in the parameters of of 33 mils but then you know we're talking about the case size but then the lug length and all of that is affected too so there's this fine line that you have to cross is you know when you bump up the size to 38 all of a sudden the lug length then jumps to 50 and it's like it's a little bit too much and maybe it helps to just scale it down a bit it's a 32 more likely. Yeah, I agree, Andrew. Uh, perfect choice of strap, Perry. We talking about this? Yes, got some got some drab going on there. Blued hands, really interesting looking. I've never seen this. It's a leaf style hand that then becomes a, a straight hand. And the typeface is superb. This is just typical 1940s with the, the ruler style minute track inside there. Fabrique Swiss, I love that. Very nice detail. Great elements. It's a cool piece, really awesome. I think it's automatic. They don't make hand wound very often. But uh, yeah, Megan loves her Longines World War II pieces. Yep. And really enjoying that. I actually had a look at, what is the one called? The Longines Heritage Military. The one that came before this, I think is pretty astounding. I love that huge crown. And <laughs> Flippin says, time for a drink. Currently, I've got a, a fisherman's friend in the corner of my cheek, like a like chewing tobacco. But uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to try. Let's hit the, the Glen Livet and I'll be with you in a moment. Flip and Zippo, it's great having you here, man, really. And all the rest of you who've joined, absolute pleasure. Okay, second hand is a rocket. It, it's damn cool, 121. Okay, long jean underrated. It is. It surely is. Most definitely is. Okay, and they have their chronographs. I love the most. The big eye. I'd love to get myself a big eye. They have disappeared. There's so much demand for them. Uh, right, moving to Curtis next. Curtis, you're in the chat. Now he is a retired pilot. We've we've chatted about Curtis a lot in the past. He's a Marine. Uh, he's uh, 
interesting. He trained in industrial design. We met up when he was in the UK, which was a good time. He never brought his Rolex, his GMT. This is his first, pretty much his his first Rolex, and he's owned it for well over 30 years. And uh, it's a 16750. It's in such good condition. He has a buddy, a friend of his. I think I remember the story right. Uh, but his friend got the exact same watch as him, and it's never been serviced throughout its lifetime. And it's still perfect. So isn't it amazing? It's it's just amazing. It's uh, these transitionals are awesome pieces. When you when you have the zero attached to it, Roberto saying thank you for doing this. It's my pleasure, man. This this is the joy. We get to share what everyone else has, and it's it's so much fun. Uh, these transitionals are fascinating. You know, you've got the sapphire crystal, but you have all the rest of the gorgeous components. You've got the tritium dial. Look at that even fade. The bezel, I'm sure, has been replaced. Curtis, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, it has all of the little facets you want from vintage, but you do have a modern touch. You've got the modern movements. Heidi guys greater than Red Bar. Neo, that's pushing it a bit too far. But thank you. That's that's one hell of a compliment, Neo, really. Uh, I love Red Bar. I'd love to. I can't wait for the world to be open again. We need it. Anyone in London, let's make it happen. Meet up. It'd be so good. Vintage Rolex at its best. It is. The Phantom, I think it does. Speaking of Phantoms, you're going to see your watch later on. I don't know if that's if that's the Zenith Phantom or if that's the uh, the Lunga. We're gonna have a look at a cool Lunga later on. But uh, these these pieces do have, I think, even more merit next to the, the even earlier vintage pieces. I, as far as daily wearers, this one I, I would take this over one six seven five as a daily wearer, just purely because it's a bit more modern in that sense. I think this is a nineteen seventy three, um, and Curtis. I don't know if you're still watching Curtis, but he's retired, but he still does training courses along with the Marine Corps in, in California. Uh, I didn't say, he, he basically wrote a whole load of books about uh, helicopters and again, I'm trying to rack my brains remembering all of this stuff, but yeah, Curtis, if you're still in the chat, let us know. Awesome piece, really stunning. I really am disappointed I couldn't meet this GMT in person because it is stunning. It has an amazing bit of his history. Uh, Hans and Eric are talking about a blown speaker that that Eric, uh, let's see, Celestian Vintage. Yeah, so, so Eric blew a, a speaker recently, I think last weekend, on his amp, unfortunately. And uh, they're chatting about, about grunge and distortion and the Clapton Bino Blues Breaker. Okay, that's one hell of a cool tone. Uh, and more chats going on again, ladies and gents. Ask me questions. Tag me in the chat. Turbo saying, just joining now, reading the title. Not when people are paying secondhand. For yeah, I didn't even address the title. Eh? What, what's wrong with me? Is watch collecting a healthy addiction? Uh, you know, we're what, like half an hour in? 45 minutes in. I haven't even, I haven't even addressed it there. That's freaking hilarious. Um, Shatan says, I love how elegantly those vintage Rolexes with their hollow endling strap. I mean, I love it. Anything with a, f a female. It's, it's technically a female center link. They are just a cut above. I, I absolutely adore them. I, I'm really not a fan of, of solid end links. That's just my preference. Not male end links, I should say. Female end links just have a, a different style to them altogether. Okay, I've got to carry on moving. I see Curtis saying, great watch, 1983. Okay, I was, I was 10 years off. Um, my third bezel, but I have the other two. Looks like a 1675, but four, a four hertz, quick set date, matte dial, 100 meters. It's an awesome piece. You've got a gem here, Curtis, really. Moving to Dear Artifact next. Where is he in the chat? Because he sent in ooh, one of my favorite reissue chronographs. It's just, it's a beast. It's an absolute beast. The, the Navi Timer 806 reissue, it's just, it has it all, man. If you want a Navi Timer, this is the way to do it. This is, this is it. Uh, Marcus says in the chat, what do you look for in a watch shopping experience? Ooh, good question. Customer service is good. I don't know if you're talking about face-to-face -face or if you're talking online, but you know it needs to be depending on the on the occasion. It needs to you know it needs to commemorate the occasion pretty well. It needs to leave you with a lasting impact. And it's it's so funny how many boutiques are so welcoming and others just they don't, they want you out the door. <laughs> uh, you know I talk about Harrods because I used to go there very often back in the day, and. Rolex would always sort of look at you over their shoulder and not really pay attention. You go to Audemars Piguet next door, welcome you in, sit down, try on all of our gold Royal Oaks, whatever you like. Times have changed since then too, but I mean, it's, you know, you want to feel like you're appreciated, like with any sales experience. And uh, yeah, it's fascinating. I'm in this zone where I really want to get a Rolex by my 30th. 
and uh who knows how that's going to work out but uh, I, I really hope that experience is something special because the sub the submariner really got me started in all of this years ago uh so matt says love the navi time has sold mine regret it phantom awesome yeah it is stunning photography dear artifact is a king of photos we'll have a look at another one in a second and it was mentioned that this watch is hideous yeah it definitely is a, a monster when we talk about presentation and its purpose and what it does who uses a slide rule today I could have easily used this as the cover photo. You know, this is just this is just a dear artifact sends in the most incredible, super high res. Let's not forget. We go right in. We can see the flex of skin. We can probably take graphs of his of his thumbprint and and you know copy it there. The the quality of these photos are just insane. Beautiful. You can even see the brass underneath. That's how sharp it is. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, definitely not a, watch, not a watch for everyone, especially the slide rule doesn't it doesn't really factor in much today with what we do. Can you imagine using this while flying a plane? I mean, an old school plane where you, you're literally just strapped in with a motor and, and steel protecting you, and that's it. That's just. Can you imagine that the vibrations and trying to work the slide rule while you're going, calculating fuel time and everything there? It's just it's hilarious. Um, when I was 50, I got my first, so it's never too late. 121. That does leave me with hope, gotta say. And and Thomas, it is a nice piece, right? It is stunning. Um, the artifact in his photos. And Tycho saying opinion about the old and current Breitling logo. You mean you mean the B? That the current Breitling logo is very much a B, where the old one is just a shield and wings. Oh, the way they did vintage logos, the way that any brand really addressed their vintage logos, it's hard to match. And that's the thing, you know, we're talking about, we spoke about beautification a second ago, but it's also the character behind the brand and the watch itself. The character represented by the type, just typeface. You don't see serifs on font anymore. It's just something that's not done. It's, it's almost like brands are afraid to dig into stuff that's charming, stuff that captures you, that, that the more pedantic people would look at and, and appreciate. Open nines at the, I mean, that kind of stuff just, just doesn't happen much anymore. Similar to logos and branding, I think there are many lost opportunities. You look at the IWC engineer and how beautiful that type is. Look at how Longines and JLC addressed their automatic script in that beautiful cursive. There's so much that they did back then that's lost, unfortunately. Unfortunately. A beautiful photograph, though, dear artifact, as always. Let's move on to one of the most incredible shots of the show. Oh, that's amazing. Now, the way he worded it, he said it's 160th anniversary Carrera. And I was like, what? Carrera hasn't been around that long. But uh, it's, it's commemorating Hoyer and its 160th anniversary. I mean, look at that. He's just nailed it. So, of course, this is faux tritium and everything else, but it matches with the khaki strap. And it's just, it's such a character. The Carrera can't make many other racing watches like them. This is how it's best represented. And I wish... Uh, we got, I mean, the sad thing is the vintage ones are so expensive today. Superior prices. Lovely corduroy strap. Would you call this corduroy? I guess you would, right? Um, okay, I got to catch up with the chat. There's some good questions. Shield and Wings, AOPA logo, 121 says. Aircraft Owners Pilots Association. I mean, 121 is a flight instructor. He knows his details. Marcello, absolute pleasure having you here. A fellow industrial designer. Forgot to submit a watch this time. Still wearing the Santos. Can't take it off the wrist after three months. I mean, congratulations again. For your 21st, you bought yourself a Santos. Wish I was doing that at 21. Aziraha saying, that old Brightling logo looks like an open book and shield. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just character. There's a new Seraph in town. The very on. We're getting, we're getting the puns going. It's good. It's good. Try it on. It's like we've gone overly minimalist with our graphic designs. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it's... The funny thing is, though, we look at... We look at this brand, for example, this Hoya logo is a classic, and I don't think they use this logo anymore with the modern pieces, correct me if I'm wrong, but just that is so stylized and just so correct. But here's an example of a watch that is very minimalist, and this is based on a watch from the 60s. So it's almost like this is the transition. You know, you have these lyre style lugs, which is very beautified, but the dial itself, the, the batons, everything's very formalized, very minimalist as you said appreciate the feature dear artifact don't need to appreciate it man we need to appreciate your submissions they are they're a dream uh awesome awesome champagne dial silver effect there pocket shot we got to appreciate it's nice i think these are blue hands yes this looks like a blued set of hands 
it's just great. It just epitomizes the Carrera in its uh, natural form as it's changed over time. Yeah, love it or hate it. Tag Hoyer. Right. Any other questions, Tao? Thank you for <laughs> thank you for the super chat, Tao. Thank you for genuine and pure love for watches. You're a blessing to the whole watch collect. Thank you, man. Really. No, I mean it's it's such a joy doing these. I've said this millions of times that. You know, if it wasn't for you, the content wouldn't be here. This is very much your contribution that is making this possible. But uh, it's, I've loved taking this three week break because it just helped me re recal recalibrate the brain while on medication to get back in and uh, pick up where it started, where, where it was left off. Timex, Iron Man, Chaz says, I mean, that's a cool piece. You're not 30. So wise, so smooth. EP Life, I am um, 27. Yeah. Still a youngster. I'm still still a youngster. But uh, so what? I got three years until I get a Rolex. That's <laughs> it's more than enough time to save the cash, right? Yeah, gotta love a pocket shot, as Megan says. It's a really nice feature. If you're on Instagram, guys have cr like bizarre hashtags: fist fist wrist shots and movement shots and shadow. Uh, I don't know. The, the hashtags just don't don't stop. Dominic, amazing. This is not all though. Dominic also sent in. Just a win of a shot. This is the first Submariner. I think it is. There are a few more later on. And I should also mention, if you want to follow this gentleman, Things I Like Too, I'll put it into the chat, at Things I Like Too. Uh, I think that's it. Check him out on Instagram. Check out what he has. And this shot is just killer. So immediately, anyone who knows their guitars, it's a Les Paul. Les Paul Custom. I haven't played a Les Paul in a very, very long time. But the natural, you know, beautiful baby blue, we've got some awesome perlage to it there. Treble pickup, as you deserve, as you should. And the Submariner, I think this is a this is a um, 114, 060. The lugs look a little bit square. So yeah, this is not 114, 116, 610. I've been out the game for a while. I'm just always drawn to the no dates because that's my preference, but this is the date sub. Nice piece. Can't ever go wrong with a Submariner. In this world of watches, there are a few things in life that you can't go wrong with. When it comes to guitars, it's Les Pauls, it's Stratocasters, it's you know a Martin, a Gibson. Uh, in the watch world, a Submariner is one of the top 10. Can't deny it. I'm an Omega fanboy. I love it. Omega was my first. And Seamaster is also a brilliant watch. Submariner just as equally good. Love it. But they're different. They know they're, they're appreciated for different reasons. I love that story too. Um, they're very heavy. Neferion, tell me about it. Didn't, Les Balls, geez, it's like, it's like dealing with a, a slab of bricks on your lap. Um, any more questions in the chat? I'm missing a lot of you here. Uh, glad I made it. Hey, Roberto, pleasure to have you here. And the rest of you, uh, always a joy. How cool is this? You won't believe this. So Dominic sends in a Submariner with a Les Paul. Dr. Bob is next. And these are the only two watches and guitar shots together. Next, we have a PRS with a Speedmaster in blue. How crazy is that? Amongst the 120 submissions, uh, we have two side-by-side, -side, both guitar and watch submissions. I love it. Absolutely love it. This is a really nice Speedmaster too. It's it's a full, it's on the annual calendar. It's got a moon phase. It's it's the automatic, I think. It is the coaxial. I'll have to look at it in a bit more detail. PRS, got to love a PRS. Paul Reed Smith. Ziraz says, uh, Roberto says, I'm a Seiko and Longjing guy. Nice blend. Uh, since there are three years to go, you better get on that Rolex waiting list right now. Yeah, I don't think it'll take that long. I don't know. I'm pretty confident. You, I mean, listening to me, I'm, I sound persuasive enough, right? I'm sure I can, I can butter up a sales guy and just, you know, break it to him. Maybe drop the hint that I'm the ID guy, and then all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, maybe he can pull. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm joking. I'm not that big-headed. Uh, Juan, welcome, welcome, Juan. Great having you here. We're going to have a look at a huge selection of watches you sent in. Oh, amazing stuff, though. Grand Seikos, Hamiltons, Vacherons. You're in for a treat when we get to Jay later on. Talking watches, pleasure. This one's manual wine, Dr. Bob says. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, really? So this is an 18... Is it, it's, not, it's an 1861 base caliber, maybe, uh, with, I, I don't know, with a moon phase on top of it, with a date complication. 
it's very gnarly blued hands and everything else it's really clean i do like the the extra sub dial at the top it does clean it up and you have a broad arrow hand which is and you have a steel bezel true to the 57 speaking of which i'm going to work on a, a omega video very soon uh, and it's all design based it's it's around the 2021 seamaster leak and it's going to be fun i've just decided to go balls to the wall looking at the full development of the vintage you know the, the 300m seamaster line and how it's changed and where i think they could improve the modern watch and yeah it should be fun turbo yeah hey i'm the id guy that'd be funny right that'd be really funny and then the guy just looks at you like so what the hell is your point uh raymond says broad arrows triple date calendar no coaxial thank you raymond nice looking model i love the blue blue elements are stunning All right and eric's asking about the pickups to dr bob uh, he also mentioned something about flipping over the uh, the les paul reversing those pickups yeah i mean I reversed my bridge pickup on the Strat and it changed, it just completely changed the, the guitar. Would recommend to anyone out there, if you have a Strat, turn that bridge pickup around. You pick up the bass strings, you know, it, it alternates. It's amazing. Next up to Dylan. Dr. Bob, thank you for these. Dylan, 121 click bezel. We saw you in the chat a second ago. We have a IWC Spitfire Chrono. He has a very eclectic taste of pieces. Now, I, I did say earlier that he is a, a flying instructor, so he loves his you know, pilot-related watches, and these two line up. Andreas, I'm going to be going into the AD and say, I'm the ID guy. I'll let you know the result. It should be funny, right? I mean, it could work. I don't know what would happen. Maybe everyone should, but then it kind of ruins the uh, <laughs> impersonating. Oh, it's so good. It's pretty hilarious, i got to say. It's an awesome shot, though, right? Yeah, it's stunning. Uh, I see Onur joining us and many more of you. Welcome. Uh, he loves his dark shots. We get to, he, he does pick up his loom shots very well, and we've got some awesome brushing to the finish. <clears throat> we can appreciate the raised numerals here. And IWC, they're definitely doing, they're doing some great stuff, but a lot of their watches are just you know getting missed out, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, it's so many brands out there. IWC, Panerai, they deserve more love. And I think the right creative direction would help push them in a good way. Um, but that's neither here nor there. You can't really just say that. Talk is cheap, ladies and gentlemen. Talk is cheap. Chili Badger, welcome. Uh, straight into the Brighton Watches of Switzerland. That's where I was going to go, Chili Badger. That's unfair. Anyway, it's all good. It's all good. You can go first. Uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. That is pretty damn funny. It's an awesome shot, though. You get to appreciate the anti-reflective coating. It's, I mean, that's the beauty of AR coating is that you can literally touch the dial by the, by the presentation there. Moving next, another shot from Dylan is the Air King, one of the most bizarre watches. We featured the, the Datejust, the Wimbledon dial in the very beginning. And this, I think, lines up. If I'm, if I'm breathing on the mic, sorry about that. Uh, this lines up very much with the, the Wimbledon Datejust. I think by the end of when, when they're discontinued, and we know that these watches are going to get discontinued soon. Um, this, is, this example is also going to be one that's sought after. It's just so damn peculiar. It's just so out there and strange. It's definitely, I mean, we talk about vanilla watch or Marmite watch or however you want to compare it. This is definitely one of them. Uh, you have uh, that open, oh, I can't, it just bugs me. But just funky things like the yellow accents, the green. It's, it's a very strange watch, like the Milgas in many ways, you know? Got to keep my photography up with your artifact. Yeah, I mean, he does, he does really... Um, make us make a shame of us with his photography. It's incredible. I've also been looking at the way the the white gold numerals work on the the original explorers and this model, and I do appreciate it. I like how it plays in the light. It's pretty nice. Rolex is Flieger. I mean, it is. It's inspired by them and the original Air Kings. They've got some amazing. I'm pretty sure the original Air Kings also had similar dial arrangements to this with the the zero five, the fifty five, the twenty twenty five. Yeah, lots of fives, as people have said in the past. Awesome. Another great pocket shot, Dylan. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Jumping to Eric Bell next, and that should be good. Uh, what else? Uh, Juan, thank you for the super chat. It's going to be so much fun checking out your pieces. You've really sent in a mixed bag for us to look at in a moment. Uh, we will get there. We are, we are going to E at the moment. So uh, how long have we been running? Just over an hour. Pretty amazing. Okay. Got a motor. So to Eric next. Now, Eric loves the water. How cool is that shot? 
I've got to go visit Scotland. Loch Lomond, it's where he's based. And he uh, he is an instructor for swimming, I'm sure. And I think this is what his, his caption was. Swimming instructor. And the water was, should I say, the air temperature was minus seven degrees. So I'm sure the water must have been even worse. And he loves his dive watches. They need to be 50 mils because Eric's wrist is like nine centimeters, I think. I think he sent in a shot of that too. And uh, it's awesome. What I love is his, his pure appreciation for the dive watch spans. He, he, there's no bias. He has everything from Rolex c 43s that he scratched <laughs> to Aragons, to Seikos, to Casios, to G-Shocks, the whole, the whole shebang. And that's the real appreciation there. That's when someone really can get involved. Check out this loom. That is just manic. When do you see loom like that? It's insane. I think it's awesome. Uh, and let's catch up with the chat again. Uh, Beast, my dad got a 50 meter Aragon wore it. It's hilarious. I mean, I, I can barely wear a, a 42. So how you can wear a 50 and pull it off? Freaking amazing. Uh, did you hear about the new watch brand Zello? Nope. They make submarine homages that run counterclockwise. <laughs> You're kidding, VDev. That's so cool. I love it. Uh, Fibos Gray Eagle Ray Automatic Compressor. That's another awesome piece. Or should I say, should I say Fibos or Phoebus? So I don't know. I'll say Phoebus. McAllen Glenn Livet and Watches does not get much better than that. Yeah, Nelson, it's good. We have a good time here. We try to at least. Uh, yeah, this dial. I mean, the loom of these pieces are just insane. Why, why loom the dial and the baton? Because you can. Because loom can just. Yeah, it's amazing. Anyway, Eric, love it uh, as always. Absolute pleasure having you here, Eric. Jumping next to Jimmy. I think he goes by the username Flieger777. Yeah, I think so. And he sent in a few, how's this? He sent in a few shots of his travel. We have lots of pilots. We've had Curtis. We've now had, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I just love the selection. But now we're getting another Air King, which is just, oops, hit the mic, which is just great. Uh, and now we get to see it in a different light, different angle. The Outlier, such a peculiar watch. And uh, like a torch, yeah, I agree, Chidge. What a cool name. Uh, it does pretty much glow like a torch, like a nightlight. When you're lost, I mean, the super loom of these pieces, any any watch that has loom like this, when you're, this is the kind of watch you want when you're stranded in the middle of nowhere. You don't need a flare gun. You just loom this thing up and the ships would see you, the, the shipping ships, should I say. Right. Awesome. Really stunning piece. We've uh, spoken about this enough. But he sent in a few more. Now, if I remember, so he flies a Boeing 777. That's his, that's his poison. And he's very much in the commercial industry of, you know, package delivery, transportation. So he's been flying all year and he takes, he's got an awesome set of pieces and, you know, predominantly Rolex GMTs and Explorers and the typical things we would expect. But I like how it all ties into his experience as a pilot, how there is GMT function to it somewhere there. And yeah, it's great. Nice irking. It's cool, Megan. I agree. It's going to be one of a very sought after few once it's discontinued, as they all are. Oh, Flieg is there, there is in the chat. I'm um, wearing it as we speak. Yeah, it's nice. The CHNR, I, it's, I think Time and Tide did a good write-up and video around this watch, and I made a video about it, I think, a year or two years ago, discussing whether it's the Ugly Duckling or a future classic, and I think it falls into the latter category. Um, it's This watch is just, I love the complementary colors. Brown bezel. We got an awesome, just the root beer finish, the, the balance. It's very formalized. It's not as sports oriented, but it just it does very well. And we've had a look at vintage ones before too. And there's mention about left hand seat. Yeah, it's great. It really is great. We have a few more shots though from Jimmy. We have the Explorer 39. My <laughs> avert your eyes, ladies and gentlemen. My my loved watch. I just I just adore the 39. It's been such a funny experience, huh? You know, it's, it's it's interesting because a lot of the controversy came out of it because I just didn't appreciate wearing the watch at all. And I'm sure many think it was just done for the sake of forced controversy, but I really, it's not a watch I miss. It's a watch I've never actually looked back on to think about again. It's bizarre. I love the Explorer. I really do. But the modern watches just don't hit my, don't do it. They don't ring the bell. So it's it's fascinating. I love how our preferences change. Still a sublime watch. I mean, you need one watch to do it all. This is an example of it, you know. Uh, yeah, great piece, great presentation. And one more, which I think a lot of us can enjoy, the original Kermit. 
and my favorite in the category, just saying. I think what made the Kermit special was its understatedness. Aluminium bezel. Speaking of which, we're now, what, an hour and, what, five minutes? An hour and five minutes in. Um, I'm making, I've made a video all about bezels. It's a 15-minute long video all about bezel inserts. Who knew that you could do that and make it relatively interesting? It was a lot of fun to put together. So we go through everything from Bakelite to forged carbon and all the, the most common bezel inserts we see. And there's just such an appeal about aluminium. Very charming. Uh, yeah, George says, thought you weren't keen on it. I think you're talking to me, George. Yeah, the, the 39ers, sadly. It's a watch that just never gel. Um, I love the Hulk for its overstatedness. The fair enough, I mean, that's it, right? It's the modern take. It's the... But there's something a bit more charming about the subtlety. We talk about green being the anniversary watch, and yeah, spoken about that enough. So, <laughs> oh, and Mark, you got rid of yours too, right? You sold it to Showcase. It's fascinating. I mean, Mark, can you tell me, can you tag me in the chat and tell me why you got over it? What was the reason? It's it's so funny. Let's go back to it. As as great as the Explorer is, it's almost like it's the first watch to be culled in a collection. It's <clears throat> you know you can describe it as liquid. It's the liquid watch. It's the one that's great. It's there, but then when you have so many others, it's one that kind of falls into the background, and you kind of you wear it once or twice a week, but it's never something that stays with you, you know. And uh, it's funny. Eh? This this is very much the liquid watch. You sell it, you know, you can get five and a half, six grand. And uh, you know, you move on to the next piece. It's fascinating. So it seems like you're not you're not the only one, Mark. And the Phantom says, "Got my Alunga and Zona tonight." Like like the Phantom Phantom. Or are we talking? Please tell us what model it is. I'd love to know. I I have such an immense appreciation for Alunga and Zona. I, I think there's only one tonight. We featured a couple in the past, but yeah, it's it all, they're such. It's funny how Watchbox are not talking them up. They they do deserve it. Honestly, they deserve it. Uh, Zira is saying the problem with Rolex Explorer is that now people most associated with the Seiko 5 than the traditional Rolex. Yeah, I mean, it's bizarre. It's just bizarre. Which one do you prefer, Explorer 1 or Air King? Oh. Can I say neither? I would say neither. It's the size and proportions are the one is the main reason why it just didn't gel with me. Again, personal preference. Uh, <laughs> don't tell them, Pike. Uh, so, and Mark says it just became a, a work watch. Yeah. I mean, it just kind of got dumbed down. I, I, yeah, I appreciate that. So Jimmy, thank you for all of these. Love the Kermits. We've spoken about this piece a lot. I think this kind of trumps the others. The Hulk is, I do love the Hulk for style, but the greenness of it, very overpowering. Um, okay. Oh, geez. Now we're jumping to Megan. I'm going to take a hit from the Glenn Livet now before we get to it. Let's go and start. So what should we start with? <clears throat> the big news that's been out recently. Um, HYT has been has declared bankruptcy as a manufacturer. So I had this segment saved of RIP HYT. And we'll have a look at them now. Let's just hit the whiskey. Yeah, we're going into a different, a completely different area of watches now. This is a, a different playing field, as we know. Uh, Megan and her family generally share some seriously heavy hitting pieces with us to enjoy. Okay, I uh, see some more some more comments here. Uh, nothing directed to me. Oh, Bonaventure says, "Are there along the zona with straight logo, or do they all have code?" I think that's no, that's always been their trait, pretty much. Unless you're going down the route of vintage, like from the forties. I don't even think they printed along the zona on their dials back then. Okay, let's have a look at HYT first. Now, HYT is known as a brand as one that is oil filled. You know, that was like their calling card. It was almost like a piston based system where the oil would move around the watch and tell you the time. So you'll see that HYT seems to love skulls in there. I don't know why that's a part of their language. There's some other really interesting ones which we're gonna look at in a moment, but this is, as most of us know, Megan, <laughs> Megan loves her outliers. So uh, this is an example of one for sure. Now I'm just having a look at the way the dial has been done. This reminds me of that, what's that, that that toy that we used to get back in the day where we could put our faces on it and it would sketch out your face. What, what were they called? You know, those needle things? That's freaking hilarious. I, I don't know anything about these references. I just know that they look bizarre. And as we go through, you'll see more of them. Again, this is the uh, RIP HYT segment. So uh, let's move on next. Now these are the ones I would enjoy a lot more. These are like, 
you know, motorized. They've got some crazy machinery to them. I do love this whole radioactive image. I mean, look at the, the sapphire crystal there. It's, it's amazing. So the question you have to ask now is what's going to happen to HYT as a brand? Are the prices going to jump up? Are they going to the Japanese pa oh, Pachinko? Is that what it's called, Andrew? Thank you. Acupuncture. <laughs> yeah, there's some crazy pieces. I've, I've seen these reviewed a few times with Watchbox and, and others. But it's it's never a watch that I've really covered. From it, just a you know, similar to Resence. We're gonna have a look at a Resence in a moment. Similar to Resence, it's it's very out there. It's very so different in the category. The box crystal is bizarre, gotta say. Engine pump looking movements. Yeah, it's fascinating. I don't even know how you read the time. 60 minutes, and then the liquid would basically tell you what time it is. So at the moment it's like, what is that? Seven? Oh, I don't know. Don't even know where to start. Cool looking piece. And we've got a few more. Let's have a look. RIP HYTC. Some more skull based pieces. I that skeleton. I don't know how if Megan, if you know, can you let us know the, the specs? But they are they are huge. Uh, what else is going on? Lots of chat. Really? Yeah, Mark. I think that was that was all just uh, for the sake of it was a Wikipedia page. I mean, how could you? Someone just went in and edited that that piece of information. That's that's rubbish. I mean, the reality is, if a watch brand doesn't sell their products, if their watches are very expensive and they're not making headway when it comes to sales, then of course they would go out of business. There's lots of things. I mean, these movements are entirely unique to the pieces themselves. Hans is saying Aretha song, Aretha Franklin. What do we have here? I don't know. Uh, you're welcome, Doctor. I don't know what's going on. I love it. And last from RIP HYT. I've taken a few out for us to look at. This one is probably one of my favorites. It's one of the most like direct mechanical looking machines. Uh, it's just bizarre. Totally bizarre and out there. Um, so let's see. Eric says, Aliga, please go back to the soon slash now. To the soon. Eric, be, be a bit more specific, sir. Um, Nice looking piece, really bonkers. But let's get to the stuff that we can relate to a little bit more. Unfortunately, HYT, who knows if these watches are going to go up in prices now or uh, if the brand is going to be bought by someone else, if it's going to be recaptured. Um, but it's a R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Okay, got it, Hans. Got it, got it. Uh, right, first Megan watch. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look. I don't want to know. Oh, what do I do? Got tourbillons. Let's go and have a look at Arescence first. Let's just warm up the palette a bit more. I think I have featured this in the past, so forgive me. But the Olive Dial Arescence is a stunning machine. It's a really fascinating model. Don't worry, Eric. We'll get to the first watch in a moment. There's, uh, there's some cool models we're going to have a look at in a sec. Um, I love the brushing, the finishing, the light play. Why are more watches don't use Olive Drab on their dials? I do not know because it's, it's as effective as blue. Blue seems to be the big thing, but green, uh, even more essential, I think. Same with, with burgundy. We'd love to see those colors happen more. And you, It's a true time machine. Yeah, I agree, Michael. It's great. Again, tag me if you want to get my attention and for me to read your comment easier. Uh, what else is going on here? Utterly stunning. I mean, Eric, Eric, I'm sure, would love the outliers. Resonance is a cool model. Uh, the way you can tell the time, I'm sure most of you probably know. Uh, this is the hour, so it's three. That's the minute, so it's five. And I can never get this right. This is your date. Aha, I realized. There's your Saturday and Sunday in the brighter yellow. So this is Friday. And uh, it's just a strange beast. And I think this is your, your running seconds. Or it's your power reserve. Uh, I don't know. But the whole dial rotates. We've chatted about it before. A really interesting machine. I think it has two ETA-based calibers. So it's fa And it's all oil-filled as well. So it's a fascinating, fascinating monster. Okay, let's go a little bit further up to Moser. Got to love our Mosers and uh, just a gorgeous grape dial. I think this is the only Moser we will be featuring today, I think. Yeah, unfortunately, we've had a lot in the past, streamliners and you name it. But a grape dial is something you don't see much. And another beautiful example, Matt's saying, what's the name of the watch? You're talking about Resence. It's R-E-S-S-E-N. I think that's how you spell it. I put it in the chat for you. Resence, probably. Uh, Pound the drums, just got the alert for your show. Jeez, like over an hour. YouTube, thanks for, thanks for sticking up for me, YouTube. Uh, yeah, we've had a good time. Been running for an hour. Still got lots more. Pound the drums, you're not up yet. But you, jeez, look how many. There are so many submissions, people. 
yeah, buckle in. This is going to be a four hour. <laughs> Go to church, walk your dog, uh, take your kids to the park, come back. We'll still be going. Don't worry. And uh, I've still got a bit of coffee left, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to hit the Glen Livet and uh, we back in. Wonder of Watcher says, not sure that movement is oil filled. I'm pretty sure that's their calling card, or maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's always been Resonance's calling card that they have something like 34 milliliters of oil inside it. But uh, yeah, bizarre. Talking about Laurent Ferrier, Andrew, another watch, another watch that Megan loves, the family loves. Uh, LF, you can't go wrong. Moser and LF are just that, you know, tied together. Right. So, what should we look at first? We've got two RMRP guys coming up now. Hmm. Okay. Let's start with something mild. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. So this is the AP uh, tourbillon. I mean, what else needs to be said? Skeletonized tourbillon. Uh, it's an incredible, incredible machine. Uh, I've been looking at this and comparing it to the Laurent, not the Laurent Ferry, the Gerard Perigo, uh, the Laureato tourbillon, just as amazing. Those two watches together in this category are just nuts. So uh, this is as pretty much as cool as it gets. I do love how the watch feels semi-classical in a way, but very modern at the same time, very conceptual. The tourbillon in the center there is amazing. I think tourbillons are just, they're, they're so, so overrated for what they are. I mean, realistically, it's, it's amazing how much prices are jacked up just because of a tourbillon <laughs> complication. But then it is pretty stunning to watch. And I mean, this is essentially your running seconds you can enjoy, you know? Uh, functional art. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it, Zira. Huh? Am I saying your name right? I hope I am. Uh, so yeah, I think this is rose gold or yellow gold. I don't know. Definitely some models are oil-filled, but okay. Okay. Thanks, Wonder of Watches. Yeah, it's a great piece. They really are just fascinating. I do love a skeleton dial. Uh, you can read it. It's quite legible. It's not like the RMs that we see very often. This one is actually pretty legible for what it is. Okay. So next up, we have a watch that I have never seen before, and it's the Concept Lap Timer Michael Schumacher. Now, I don't even know where to start with this watch. It's, it's just crazy cool. So it's an, I would say it's, so it's the Concept. Okay, okay. So AP Concept is another branch completely. It's not an overseas. It's not just your typical Royal Oak. And I was, I've just been thinking about what the separate button is on the side, and I think that's the flyback. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the flyback chronograph. Now, for the registers, I th we have a subdial here. I don't know. It's difficult to make out in the light, but we have a subdial here for 30 minutes, and maybe that's your running seconds, I would imagine. The concept watches are just bizarre, absolutely bizarre. I don't even know what the strap is, if it's rubber, if it's forged carbon, who knows. But uh, it's, it's a crazy cool machine. The concept watches do deserve a lot more attention, even though they are getting it. And uh, of course, not everyone can rock the the sizes of them. But I love I love how they've taken that '70s integrated aesthetic and turned it into something much more future focused and alien in a way, but still feels like a royal oak there too. <laughs> the Ferron says, "I believe this is what Gerald Genta was going for with the royal oak." I mean, that's hilarious. No, I don't think so. I don't think this was his intention. And I mean, it's. It's a sad thing about AP. They're very much like a one-trick pony at this point, unfortunately. Um, and the whole the whole craze around AP sports watches, it's just... You know, Patek discontinued the 5711. Imagine AP discontinued the Royal Oak, just stopped completely and said, you're either getting a code 1159 or that's it. That's all you get. Is the time function a single-handed affair? I don't think so. I think it's double stacked. The uh, the hour hand is a short little stubby unit you can see underneath here. I think again, this is the first time I've ever seen this watch, but it's just amazing. Uh, the pony is on, it, and the pony is on its last legs. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but we haven't had a look at the movement. Let's see what we can take in here. Holy, crap. that is just. I have never, I have never seen such a complicated movement in an AP before that I've seen it here first ladies and gentlemen what a beautiful arrangement look how it's balanced it looks like the interior of you know a sports car fascinating really is fascinating just take it just take it all in the where the column wheel is placed in the center that's the kind of stuff you don't see awesome bridge running along here the gears are all horizontally aligned you have the balance over here at the base 
AP branded there. That's fascinating. So it's a manual wind by the looks of things. I don't see a, a micro rotor. Really interesting piece though. Wow, that's insane. That is just insane. So there we go. We have a really, really bonkers, bizarre. This is kind of like one of the showstoppers, I would say, in many ways. What an incredible movement. Just nuts. Never in my life. Um, Shaitan says, Jerry Stone hinted that he killed off the 5711 because he didn't want Patek to become the Nautilus brand. Huh. A AP serviceable only. Andrew, I think that's a given. I think, I mean, taking this anywhere else, you're... You're nuts. <laughs> you really are nuts. And the service carts would probably be the same as a Royal Oak in itself. Just insane. Megan, what a cool piece, really. This is a monster. Absolute monster. I've never seen this before. And we have seen Schumacher limited editions, but not this. This is concept watch. Yeah. Can chat about it for hours. Okay. Let's get back down to earth. To Franco. Are we ready? Megan, thank you for these if you're still with us. Oh, wow. Okay. Our first Black Bay. How funny is that? Let's get down to earth to the the, the run of the mill. Um, stunning photograph, too. So, uh, very good point, Chiton. But, I mean, for Patek as a brand, you can't compare the two. Patek and AP, I mean, they have so much more to offer. Who does not want a 5370 or a 5170, 5196? Uh, what else? Perpetual calendars within their dress watch range. They have so much. 6006, 6007. Uh, they have plenty of Nautiluses and Aquanauts, but they have so many dress watches. You think of AP, on the other hand, what do they have? What's that centurion? The, mil the, mil the, the, the millinery, I think they call it. God, I really stumbled on that one. Let's hit some more coffee. I think they have the millinery and they have the code 1159, and that's pretty much all it's really recognizable for. So, Interesting, Chi Town, but I don't think they can be compared, honestly. Um, Ziraha saying, need to say now that I wish you all good luck. <laughs> good night, sorry. Uh, I need to get up early tomorrow. Pleasure having you here. Your watch will be featured at the end. So we're going to have a, a good time until then. Uh, where to start? So, Tim, welcome, Tim. Great to have you here. Just about to hit the coffee. Hmm. And Hans says, back to reality. Okay, so Franco, he has an Instagram handle. <laughs> this is funny. So his username is in, I'm going to spell this right, Philadelphia. It is worth 50 bucks. <laughs> I, it's a movie reference. Uh, but if you want to follow him on Instagram, that's his handle. So uh, he takes some beautiful photos. I mean, this is one great example. Uh, these look like Microsoft products. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, of course there's Microsoft printed there. Black Bay 58 gilt dial. It's a classic. It's, it's a very interesting watch and still one that I like debating today. I still like talking about it because it does stir up a lot of emotion, uh, in me at least. I think it's, it's, it rides this line very interestingly. Um, hello from the UK, VTSV. Welcome. Absolutely. Timothy. Great having you here too. And everyone else who's in the chat, thank you for joining. If you would like to uh, reach out, tag me in the chat, Let's keep the conversation going. Ask me some questions regarding anything, like whatever you like. Uh, I normally get a lot more lucid at this point, so I'm an open book. Um, nice pot plant, love the details. This is a gorgeous photograph, really. The perfect pirate watch, one of it just says. Yeah, it is, right? It does capture it pretty well. Uh, wrote it in my attic, Han says. I don't get that reference, but yeah, it's awesome. Really nice piece. And it's one that I still like talking about. I mean, I, I featured the 58 Navy blue courtesy of showcase watches a couple of months back. I think the guild dial has a lot more pull over the blue. Uh, it's just a lot more versatile, but this isn't a true guild dial. If I'm not mistaken, this is a printed guild dial. Technically the true guild, it's a reverse process where the paint is actually removed from the dial instead of applied. Nah, uh, how many whiskeys in? Matt, I had a sample of a Macallan earlier, which I would not recommend. Uh, but the Glen Livets, it's a rum Caribbean blend. Pretty nice. Not as good as the Glen Livet 12 Double Oak, but serviceable. You can't go wrong with a with a Glen Livet. Okay, hitting some more alcohol. <clears throat> right. Awesome shot. And they're not done yet. Franco also sent in this really amazing shot this is one of the best shots of the show uh, at the end of the year when it's time to collect the 100 best submissions 
this is an example. Seiko SPB149, and he said he was inspired to pick up this watch after my video uh, on the SPB143. I mean, that's that's very touching, I've got to say. And uh, it's, a, it's such a stunning photo. I mean, really. this is. I think this is the first Seiko we featured on the show. There's a few more coming up. But this version has the gilt hands, the gilt dial. I think Watchbox featured this a couple of days ago, actually. Tim also reviewed one. I mean, no, no bull. This is an awesome piece. They are really, really great models. I'm finding after a few months of ownership with mine that it's kind of stale, in, in, for me at least. I feel like it's just so competent that there's nothing about it that leaves me scratching my head. And I feel like, with me at least, the pedantic design dude... It needs to have something about it that keeps me coming back and thinking about if this was the best way or where does this call from? And yeah, still, I mean, this in my in my eyes at least, competing with the Black Bay, this this does it. This is its competition, and what Seiko is doing, identifying themselves in this category. I mean, this is like a thousand pounds. It's about a thousand two hundred dollars or so, right? Uh, it's it's such an interesting competitor. Of course, we now have fancy coating on it. Um, Lots of features to appreciate. And I love that it pays tribute to the 62 MAS. And uh, yeah, Phantom, I agree. It's really not a bad model. And it's the modernized variant of the 62 MAS. 63 MAS. No, 62 MAS. That's the one. Okay. Franco, amazing shot. One of the best photos of the show. Modern, yeah, Raymond, modern day, 62 MAS. Uh, Crinkle Cut says, I have the Omega JMB uh, 007 40th anniversary watch, never worn. Which one is that? The 40th anniversary. Is that the... Um, is that the Spectre model or is that the, the latest titanium? Let me know, Crinkle Cut. Tag me in the chat. I'd be very interested in, in knowing. Yeah, awesome, awesome piece. Next to George. Now, George has some amazing photos. This is, I think this is the same George who sent it. It is. This is the same George who sent in the, the Breguet at the beginning of the show. Amazing. Now, this is his wife's 31 millimeter concentric date just. And how bloody cool is that? I love, this is the kind of watch that brings me back. I mean, we can see that we have some culture here too. And this just reminds me of the Zen sand pits. If you can explain what they are to me, it'd be good. But those, those sand gardens, you know, this ripple effect just feels so much, it gives you that Eastern kind of flair to it, you know, and the numerals you know, rotated around. There is some beautification to this watch. Uh, rounded bezel instead of fluted, um, oyster bracelet instead of jubilee. I love it. Such a great photograph. It's just, George, you take some amazing shots. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need to clear my throat. Just amazing. I mean, uh, it's it's been a pleasure featuring you on the cover. That's all I can say. Uh, not titanium. Oh, so that's the that is the that's that's the Spectre, isn't it? I don't know. I I'm so <laughs> yeah. Why can't that be bigger? Flip and zipper. I agree. I mean, the date just some of them just do all the things right you know it's it's beautiful it is amazing right on i'm saying amazing a lot so i gotta stop it's funny how repetitive i get when i talk george thank you for these submissions uh, it really does pop yeah there's so much texture to it there's depth there's light play it's all the stuff you want and it's a date just so it's it, you know it epitomizes rolex as a brand the black dial it's, it's so much more versatile you know it's a tuxedo watch anyway uh you know linked to for a lady's watch it's pretty pretty amazing Saying amazing too much. What should I do? Torture myself with water. Let's do it. Megan says she has she has seen this before. Really like it. Yeah. Nice contrast to the background. It's great. I mean, George, send in more shots in the future. It would be great. To Graham next. Now we're jumping to a completely different category. This is the Luminox Navy Seal 3050 series tritium dial. And I think this was taken in Worcester in the United Kingdom, if I remember right. Uh, we've had some crazy weather. Remember, again, that this show has been in the making over three weeks, so a lot of these submissions have been saved over the course of that time. And uh, yeah, Luminox, known for their tritium dials. We love a good tritium tube arrangement. PVD coating. I think it, yeah, it is, it's, I think it's PVD coating. Uh, just orange accents galore. The question we have to ask is, Snuffbox says amazing in Japanese, Eric. That's so funny. Uh, the... Uh, the one thing about this, if Orange Hand is in the chat, it'd be good to know. There's a bit too much orange here for me. <laughs> Can I say that? It's a little bit too heavy on the orange. I love that it's the accent, but when it's the core color, 
Oof, it's a bit conflicting. How could they break it up? I think if it was me doing the reverse, I would have made the hands white, left the rest orange. White hands would be able to break up the dial interest. So it's kind of like that reverse negative, you know, as an arrangement. But still, it's a beast. I mean, it's 200 meters quartz. I don't know if it's a ronda, ronda based movement, but it's a monster. And got to love a good tritium tube. I don't think we have any more of these on the show. Could be wrong. I could be wrong. Tudor logo, Ace, nicely pointed out. Tudor shield. Yeah, we've had that debate before about the rose. And yeah, I miss the rose. Orange, easier to find you. That's true. That is true. And with a PVD, with a full black model, I guess it's a lot more identifiable in the dark. Uh, amazing is good value for money is a cliche. Uh, amazing is good value for money is a cliche. And if we could have a replacement for pops, as in the color pops would be amazingly refreshing. Yeah, Forbin, I've got to get the dictionary out and try and you know get my nomenclature a bit better. Open up the verbal, uh, the verbal speech. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, I haven't done this in, in a while, so it's 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 so weird getting back into the driver's seat. That's all I can say. Uh, is Orange Hand in the chat? I don't know, but he he loves anything orange. So uh, Tritium Loom, which has me questioning if Navy Seals would actually wear these and if they're. If these usually request low loom on watches, huh? 500 meter waterproof. Yeah, that's the question about tritium. I mean, it's a, I, I love I love that it's still a substance that is used today. Um, it's just great, it's just great. The presence. I think this is about 44 mils on the wrist, roundabout. It's just it's a monster. I like to learn more about Luminox over time. I don't think Orange Hand is with us, but you know he's always here in our hearts. So uh, orange and black is the new black. <laughs> Wonder of watches. <laughs> yeah, seals generally wear G-Shock six nine double zero. Speaking of G-Shock, we're going to get to some great ones in a moment as we jump to Jason in a second. Okay, first off, let's get to James. Now, what should we look at first? Now, James. Okay, let's get to some Rolex. Let's clear up and add some Rolex into the slots here. James sent me an email about a video question. As a disgruntled Rolex collector, he wanted to know, I think the video was about uh, two-tone sports watches. <clears throat> I'm gonna address that video in the future, but he did attach a selection of pieces and I think he's sold most of them off now. He's kind of gotten over the brand, I think. I don't know the reason why he's a disgruntled Rolex collector, but uh, we're gonna have a look at some awesome pieces that he sent in on top of it. So don't worry. Uh, I can we can see most of these are just GMTs and uh, Submariners Daytona. We see some deep seas. We see freaking amazing fifty fathoms chrono and a Seiko. But then another really cool outlier will come up in a moment. I'll just hold on the screen at the moment. Uh, what should we? <clears throat> okay, from left to right, that's one to six, and onwards from left to right, that's uh, seven to twelve, and so on. Which of these models would you choose given the opportunity? Type it in the chat. Go. <laughs> I'm gonna I'll also add my bit as I read the comments here. Uh let's see what's going on. Chaz saying it takes a bit to get your game voice on after a break. Yeah, I mean it takes it takes alcohol and and uh coffee to do the, the job mainly. Russell's joining us. Pleasure having you, Russell. It's always great to catch up. Your watches are featured at the end, and we're gonna have a laugh. Um John, thank you for the super chat. You're also, I think I said, I did save your submission. Yours was the very last submission. Um, okay, now there's talk. So let's see what's going on. Anyone in the chat, comment which Rolex you would pick up as your choice. I'll, I'll comment last. Let's see. Uh, Flippin says Smurf. Tyker says the Seiko. Uh, Noon Kuku says Rolex. The white gold sub. Rose Day date. Hmm. Russell says evening. Uh, two... The, the two, the black dial, the 50 fathoms, Captain Morgan and coffee, Marine Master 300. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's so funny. Uh, Smurf, nice sub top left. Yeah, it's great. The Coke, Daytona for me. Very divided, hey? Let's have a look. Just off the cuff, which would I take? Mm. That looks like a sea dweller at the top. That's a sea dweller there, is it? Or is it a sub? It looks like a sea dweller to me. So I would take two, the sea dweller, though the one six six zero zero. I think that would be mine, given the choice. Uh, anything else? Nineteen fifty seven trio. <laughs> yeah, guys are just chatting about anything. Kermit, only the Milgas white elder. It's great. I mean, it's isn't it fascinating how our tastes are so varied in this category? I mean, there's someone. Yeah, I love it. It's like amongst us, there is so much interest in the yacht master, the Batman. I love it. 
What a laugh. Okay, so I guess our tastes are all different, and I would be taking the Seamaster, not the sea, <laughs> not the Seamaster, the Sea Dweller. That's the one. I do love a, a good Seamaster, though. Dweller. I'll type that in. Type that badly. Forget about it. Okay, so we're moving on to the, so as he says, with this Gruntle Collector, I don't know if he has these watches. I don't know if they're in his set. Red also saying the 40 mil Sea Dweller. Yeah, that would be for me, too. I love it. It's such a charming piece. Uh, but then he also picked up this recently which is the Memovox that came out, I think, at the uh, close of last year, if I remember right. And these are awesome, really are awesome pieces. You have a diving piece here that has the full complication of an alarm. You've got an inner rotating bezel. A really interesting take. I think the one downside to this piece is that it doesn't have a gold rotor anymore, sadly. They replaced the gold rotor with, with steel. But uh, 42 mil, it's just a monster. Really nice arrangement. So true to the original member Vox, but keeps the things modern at the same time. Uh, so let's see. Going back to the collections, a couple more questions. Uh, Tarista says, for us, it takes only Adderall in order to stay awake and watch your show. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it, honestly. I mean, it's I, I would put myself to sleep. I mean, really. Uh, that's great. That's so great. It's a pleasure having you here, really. It's a joy. Um, which is the one that's missing? I think, Russell, I think it's the member Vox. I think he took that out because we look... To the Daytona, which is above it. This is just my prediction. And there's the oops, magic mouse. There's the Daytona there. So I think he was probably wearing the member box at the time. Fascinating. But then how's this? This is what I love. So big time Rolex collector, right? He has a, a nice selection of pieces. But then he also says a watch that is so underrated and deserves a lot more attention that you should appreciate is the IWC Liberty Prince Big Pilot Time Zoner. And I wholeheartedly agree. The time zoner in the IWC line is one of the best. The complication, the rotating bezel is just amazing. This watch is crazy cool. When I saw it released, I and when I saw that bezel, I thought, yes, this is what they need to do. I think they had to bend a couple, break a couple of backs to, what am I saying? They had to bend backwards a lot to get the patent for this bezel. It's awesome. It really is nice. That's a clock. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Have I missed much? Mr. Marcus, no, only uh, an hour and 40 minutes, but it's okay. I mean, we've gone through quite a bit. Uh, I mean, the, the best thing you could probably do is go back to the beginning and just flick through the selection. You don't have to listen to me prattle on and you'll get to, to where we are now, I guess, eventually. It's nice, Eric. Honestly, uh, this is an example. Look up IWC time zoner. I think they're between 42 and 44 mils in size. And I just love the complication. It's this is and this is when I said that as a brand, it's very underappreciated earlier on. IWC. This is an example of a watch that shows that they can be a bit more creative, a bit more modern. I mean, we've got red text on the time zone of uh, arrangement there. Classic IWC logo. The typeface is great around the dial. Very true to the pilot style of watches from the 30s. You know, we have these funky serifs on all the numerals. Uh, we have sword hands. We have. I just love that bezel. Ceramic bezel. We have a awesome crown it's beautiful it's a beautiful watch and it's just it has that functional focus to it it feels very much like an instrument but it also feels like a very direct sports watch at the same time you can't unfortunately you can't use it as a, a dive timer or a countdown timer that you would want but it's it's a stunning complication it's a world time but in a flieger package which is something you just don't see uh, dinner time in the berg take care Chaz, don't worry. We'll still be going when you get back. At this rate, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, Megan says the IWC is crazy cool. Bought bought the one the company held the patent to get the technology. Yeah, I mean it must have been hellishly expensive to get that right. Stunning piece, really is nice. So it's cool seeing how how collectors are are di diverting away from certain brands and jumping onto. I mean, the Memovox is such a great example. Similar IWC, really cool machine. And it's really just where you are in the hobby and, and where you're collecting pieces, you know, as, as a personal preference. Okay, moving on next to Jason. Jason sent in, oh, these shots are amazing. We were speaking about G-Shock a second ago and the Navy SEALs. This is the Titanium S Sapphire. Oh, titanium Sapphire G-Shock Square. And he takes some amazing photos. I think I have his, I do, I have his handle here. Let's put that in the chat. Uh, let's see, Canuck, uh, here we go, C-A-N-U-C-K, uh, I try to do this to bump up everyone here. Anyone who can take the time to send in watches to the show deserves to get their handles shouted out. On Instagram, 
Canuck watch friend. You can follow his stuff. His photos are incredible. We've got about four of them here to enjoy in a moment. Um, I have to love the onion crown. Yeah, absolutely, Megan. There's something I, I so greatly appreciate about a watch that not only gets the proportions of the crown right and makes a little bit larger, but then there's texture to it. I love when there's texture to a crown and, and these just, they sing. Similar to the Longines heritage pieces that we were talking about earlier. I love it. Oops. Magic Mouse really has a mind of its own at this point. Um, Sapphire Titanium. Now, we have featured one of these before, and I said, yeah, 300 bucks. But apparently, these are like a grand, two grand. They're like stupidly expensive. And this is based on the original. If I'm like, again, I'm not a G-Shock person. I'm not a Casio person. But love how they've incorporated their industrial design into the process and conceptually focused and experimenting with materials. It's kind of what I, I, I talk about in the... Um, in the bezel video, which will be coming out next week, which should be fun. Uh, yeah, I love the G-Shock, but at 15, they're 1500 Okay, thanks for that, Megan. Um, I could pull the trigger on one of these. It is very expensive, I've got to say. Um, and I think we have another shot from a distance. Crazy cool finish, though. I love the, would you call it stippling? And I don't know if this is the coating. I feel like this is the AR coating that does this to the dial and to the numerals on it. It looks bizarre. It really does. I mean, for me, I think what they've done with the Casio Oak that they're calling it, um, I find it charming because I've never been someone to really love the, the digital layout. I love analog. So if you can give me an analog G-Shock, then I'm all for it. I think it's such a nice example. And they're doing some great things. I mean, they're bringing out ghosted versions and black dials and, and grays and all sorts of colors. Yeah, Wonder of Watches. It's a great crown. Got to love a big crown. <laughs> uh, split the LED, Split the LED changing. Yeah, I don't even know what that means, Eric. You know your G-Shocks much better than me. Um, must have a G. You know what? That's true. I mean, being ID guy, the G. Hmm. But then it could also be a Grand Seiko with a G, right? Other names. Yeah. It's awesome, though. Really is nice. I wouldn't mind getting one of those Casio Oaks. I actually have had my eye on one. Could pull the trigger. But I don't know when I would wear it. I mean, my workout watches, I wear mechanical field watches or whatever. So, it's yeah, it's difficult. I guess you want that experience though, right? The Mudmaster, that's a cool example. I think it's fascinating how the technology has gone into these and how they, they do virtually everything. Humidity, pulse, they can do distance tracking, they can do wind speed and <laughs> God knows. Okay, let's have a look at some more analog related pieces here. Let's uh, focus in on... Speaking of which, I don't know if this is the only Casio G-Shock we'll be looking at. God, there's some awesome stuff coming up. Really, stay for it, ladies and gents. There's This is a stunning se uh, se selection. To the Monaco Golf Edition. Is it the, yeah, it is the Golf Edition. Uh, so, Canuck Watch Friend, again, same, same guy. This is still Jason. And this photo is just taken in the car. I think this is one of his main areas of, of refuge. Uh, the lighting is so good. You get this. Uh, the car is very much its own photo box, I think, is or light box, I should say. Uh, Mr. C, $1. Mr. C, absolute pleasure having you here. And it's great to see that $1 is, is still your calling card. And uh, yeah, it's a joy. Love the golf. I mean, it's, it's funny. I mean, when we think of Le Mans and the 70s or the late 60s and the whole Monaco. I mean, just that alone was kind of kitschy of its time, but adding the golf livery to it as well, it's even more kitschy, which I mean, it's something you can like or hate. Uh, it's it's taking the Monaco in a different direction. I mean, the, the 917 that McQueen drove was golf liveried. So, I mean, this is just that extra little bit of detail. It's a good talking point. Uh, the Monaco as it is, it's such a cool watch. I, I love it, especially the Caliber 11 and uh, that whole arrangement. Um, as a as a left-hander, wearing the watch on my right wrist would be a very interesting arrangement with the crown pointing out and everything. But it's just, you know, television case. It's such a bizarre machine. I've said this a few times before that I think when they were rushing to bring out the Monaco uh, in competition with Zenith and Seiko, they kind of just threw it all in. They said, whatever works, just chuck it in. There doesn't seem to be any clear understanding or, or like, uh, rationale behind just filling in the space with batons horizontally. It's just bizarre. A square watch with a circle dial and then these these funky... It works, though. That's the thing. The 70s, the late 60s and 70s was such a strange time for watch design, you know? 
talk about perfect for Porsche. Yeah, I mean, it is. You have a golf livery Porsche going down the road. Yeah, the, the red highlights also work. What I find amazing is this watch is still so legible for what it is. For all that's going on, you can still break your eye away from the subdials to the hands to tell the time, uh, to read the chronograph hand that's running. Yeah, love it, love it. Next up, though, and we were chatting. It's like wearing a billboard. Mr. Marcus, that's so good. I mean, this is advertising in the purest sense. I love it. Gulf oil. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It is cool. Um, you can get the Monaco with either left or right cron. I would take the traditional one, Carl. I love the... Uh, I love the idea. It doesn't, I don't know if it was from a practicality sense or it was just what they threw together, similar to the styling of the watch, putting the crown on the other side. I think that's what all, that's all they could do when it came to making the movement. But I, I love it. I think it's, it's charming in itself. But then we were chatting about beautification and yeah, pictures don't do it justice, B-Dev. I agree. I would love to, I've never tried on a Monaco. Would be nice. We were chatting about watches and beautification and I think Shaitan or Neferion, one of the guys said, that the date just is such an excellent example of beautification with a watch. And I fully agree. The beginning of the show is chatting about how beautification seems to be a thing of the past and everything is very functionally focused in the way the watches are made. Could make a video about it one day. But this piece here with the fluted bezel, it's 36 mils, it's Jubilee bracelet. It's, it's an archetype for the brand, but it is also just gorgeous. It does what it needs to do, but it's classic. I love it. This is a, this is pretty much the purest Rolex that you can get. Forget the professional stuff. I think the Datejust is one of those examples that just sings in its own category. Uh, BDev says, yeah, yeah, having to wear a Monaco is a classic. It is nice. Um, talking about whether we should go with Romans on the dial, though, I think we've actually had this conversation before. And yeah, got to say, I would prefer a Datejust with Romans. Maybe it's a bit too traditionalist for a lot of people, but yeah, it's it's charming. A beautiful photo as well. You can't matching the sleeve and, and everything there. Jason in future, send more of these in, whatever you can spare for us. Uh, it would be a joy. Okay, I'm going to move on. Carry on, Mojin, to Joel next. Joel with the Aquaterra first time. So what I've noticed, I mean, lots of new submissions, which is amazing. I mean, new time viewers of the show and everything there. And uh, Joel is an example. First time posting to the show, and it's his Aquaterra. I think it's a blue dial. It's hard to tell with anti-reflective coding, but this is the modern one, right? It's the it's the latest with the horizontal slats and the, the date at the six. I don't think this is the only one. There should be another goodie later on there too. Um, yeah, it's great. I, I really do enjoy the Aquaterra in its, in its own right. It does seem to, I, I kind of battle with understanding the watch a bit. I mean, you, you can see where the inspirations came from and very late 50s inspirations that's linked up with the Seamaster line, uh, the um, the Lyre lugs, the, the dial arrangement, everything being very balanced. And you think to yourself, is it almost too good? Is it almost too balanced for what it is? And uh, it's, it's bizarre. Still, I do love how there's a relationship between all the jagged elements. So we look to the, I mean, if we're talking about polarizing features, I think that's where we can really start it. We look at the, the jagged batons, the jagged hands, everything is sharp, right? We look to the date just and everything here is square, rectangular on the dial. And that evokes a sense of calm in a way, a lot less, you know, almost visual tension that you don't get with this, which is probably why this feels a lot more utilitarian, where this feels a lot more regressive in its presentation. I love this. This side-by-side -side is great. Again, unplanned. <laughs> it's just how the how the cards fall. But I get that feeling wearing my Seamaster too. With the jagged edges, it just gives you that that aggression that sometimes you don't want with a watch. But then you think of the application of it and what it's used for and you know, as far as dive watches go, I think it's applicable, but as a dress, as a daily wearing watch, interesting, interesting take on the sports piece. <laughs> Matt, have I put you to sleep? It's I'm done for the night. <laughs> Matt, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's pretty funny. I like that. Uh, but yeah, just noticing that the, there's, there's a sense of calm to the rectangular forms of the date just and a sense of aggression to the Aquaterra and, and many of the, the Seamaster line. So it is, it is awesome. Really nice balance. I do like the date at the six. Okay, I've got to carry on moving or else I'm going to be here all day. Uh, I've been chatting now for just almost two hours and we've, whoa, we've still got a lot to go. Okay, John, you were in the chat a second ago. Let's jump to the Seiko 5. You just picked this up. It's a reference. 
SRP E79. What a crazy looking machine. Okay. Um, I see Megan in the chat talking about the store. Gee, you know, these things just slip my mind every single time when I'm trying to talk. I do have a store. It's in the description of the video. And as Megan says, continues to evolve with new designs. Yeah. Uh, the, for about two, three months last year, I was working on a whole series of designs for t-shirts, hoodies. I do hope to expand that over the next few weeks, months. It's just finding that time. Uh, each sketch takes a good few hours, a good few days, should I say, to put together and uh, check it out. Check the store out and have a look at the presentation of things. It's very, uh, very technical related. That's what I wanted the industrial design elements to be. Something simple enough. You know, line drawings are beautiful with center lines and everything there. Typical things that we would want to see with a technical drawing. And it kind of links to the whole industrial design process. But uh, yeah. Uh, double double zero one seven bulldog says Aquaterra totally balanced, and that's it. You know, it's it's that whole feeling of is it too balanced for what it is? It's still an amazing watch, though. I mean, value for money, what you're getting. I love. Should I say that word? I mean, Forbin would probably cringe me saying value for money, uh, but the caliber inside this, you've got a coaxial. It's uh, the movements are leagues ahead in Omega. I love their coaxials. They're just bulletproof. Okay. I've never seen this watch before, and I'm questioning if this watch was artificially aged before it came in. Is this the factory setting for this piece? Again, me and Seiko, even though I own a Seiko, I am so behind in this in this area, you know? <laughs> uh, it's, it's great. It is great. Um, Non-screw-down crown. Are we talking about this, Eric? I don't know. I really don't know. Thomas Burnett is going to be the first model for the store. You know what? Thomas, that'd be a cool idea. It would be. Shark teeth. Hey, 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 good to have you. Yes, Shark Teeth, I think that was the inspiration, actually. That's what it's called in the line. Yeah, John, if you're still here with us, really nice piece. I think this was straight from Seiko. Really, really, that is awesome. So they actually patina their watches before sending them out. And this texture, I mean, this reminds you of, of steel, as you see, right? Interesting effect. Really is interesting. And this watch looks like it's built for being, I mean, it looks modded, but it's actually factory. Crazy. No one can keep up with Seiko. Yeah, I mean, they are. Uh, what I like is how they, we're going to have a look at some amazing ones in a moment, actually. Um, a couple more Prospects models and, and the like. But it's cool how they've divided their their market spaces where the Seiko 5 is getting a lot more traction. They've, they've reintroduced 80s Seiko 5s back in for people to start getting into the hobby again. Uh, they've got the Prospects line, which I really appreciate. I do like, even though they are quite overpriced for what they are, they offer amazing value for what the pieces are. I think there's better attention to detail and finish and all of that stuff there. And then they have the, the further variants where we start really getting into Grand Seiko-based movements in the line, which is also under the Prospects banner. And then we transition to Grand Seiko and all the stuff out there. Okay, John, stunning. Really nice piece. It's a monster. <laughs> amazing that they're actually aging their watches and setting them out. I guess that's the Seiko 5. You can pretty much be as creative as you want. Okay, to Jonathan next. Now, I feel like Jonathan is also a pilot. Maybe I'm wrong here. But we have a few more selections of, oh, look at these models. I can never get this reference. Is it the 16710, the Coke GMT? I think a very underrated watch. It's one that doesn't get as much appreciation by the larger or the broader community. Um which is strange because I look at the GMT hand and I think it works just so much better with the red accents. Of course, the Pepsi is the one that set the standard, but the um, the Coke is just very understated for what it is as a daily wearer, and it's it's just casual, really, really sharp. Fat lady, I don't know if it is one. Uh, someone might need to correct me there. Can you tell by the by the R of Rolex or something else there? You're talking about the Sophia Loren, right? I, I don't know. I don't know if this is the, the example. Again, me and my references. I'm terrible. We're not done yet, though. So it is the 16710. Jonathan, this is you. Oh, Jonathan, thank you. I guessed that right. Can't believe it. Two hours in, and I'm still going. Uh, next, we sent in a few more. Let's carry on. What else do we have here? An Explorer 39, my favorite in the snow. L N R O. So that's the, the designation on top. It's nuts. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I mean, sometimes the references are easy to remember. Other times, got a few lines of Coke. Other times they are uh, a bit out there. 
So this Explorer, the 39, the 214270, I feel like they're going to backtrack with the next reference and call it the 12470, which is kind of weird. The fat lady is the reference 16760. Oh, my brain. I'm going to start getting a headache. This is such a cool shot, though, in the snow. That's the reflection of a building in the background. You know, Rolex and their non-AR crystals. Again, the 39, it's a love it or hate it machine. And uh, it's it's definitely <laughs> one you can appreciate as a daily. We chatted about this a second ago. But it's also one that can get rather stale if it's not your if it's not your machine. Uh, or should I say not your daily machine. Still great. And he sent in a Submariner. Now the question, this is... Is this the new one? I think it is the new one. This is the latest, right? I think so. So this is the 12060. It's a cool piece. It's a really cool watch. I think they've done an excellent job in this this area with, with toning it down. We chatted about it before. Actually, the whole uh, the whole prediction video that came out like a week ago, I mentioned how they they really addressed it quite perfectly. They they under did it. They didn't go too far. They kept it right in that ballpark of where it needed to be. Um, this is it. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. I just guessed by looking at the lugs. We have seen a, a earlier reference a second ago. Yeah, what a lineup. Yeah, I mean, it gets better, uh, Bulldog. We'll see it in a moment. It's going to get extensive. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't stop. Uh, I have a lot of I have lots of duplicates as well. But it's yeah. Trust me when I say that we are not even started yet. We've got reversos. We've got overseas. We've got Vacheron fifty sixes. We've got offshores. Uh, doesn't end and some other really crazy names that we've never heard of in our lives so it's going to be good but uh yeah i appreciate the sub this would be the one i would go for given the chance if if i had all the money in the world i think this would be the rolex and then done move on to the next brand you know <laughs> uh flippin thank you for the super chat really one thank you and thank you for watching everyone else who's joining in and, and sitting back listening to me just just chatting away it's kind of like a radio show I've, i i have this uh crisis of conscience thinking am i a radio presenter or am i a lecturer at this point you know is it like university because i'm constantly just preaching i'm standing on a soapbox it's hilarious it is hilarious uh forbin says i'm afraid when my when i may die the last words on my lips will be a rolex reference number i wouldn't have time for an omega reference yeah i mean no one does the 57 c master i have ck2913 that's all you need. Not the double O, double one, two. Yeah, that's serious mathematics. Okay. Still looks boxy. That's not a bad thing. Wonder of watches. I mean, it does keep it modern though, right? I, I agree. It keeps it modern in a sense with the, the bigger crown guards, but it's just not too heavily done. It's not funny that that's all they needed to do really. And people have been you know, clamoring for this change for a decade, like literally a decade. Now they've done it. And the demand for the super cases are, you know, two grand plus over these. I find it hilarious. Yeah, ladies and gents, anyone who's in the chat, send me some questions. Let's get me, instead of me just talking over the watches, uh, ask me some questions related to these pieces, whatever you like. And uh, I'd love to just banter away on some other subjects, you know, something that gets my brain going. At the moment, it's almost like I'm on autopilot. I'm just speaking my mind. Uh, so this is nice. Not bad. Juan, <laughs> Juan, you've just uh, started your selection of pieces, and they are beautiful. So, Juan sold off all of his precious metal sports watches in the Rolex category to pick up this, the Platinum Day Date 41, on the left. Okay, let's see what's going on in the chat. Uh, Explorer is the I must have a pair of Mercedes hands Rolex. I mean, that's a pretty good point, Shaitan. I mean, that's that's and that speaks to the professional, right? I like that. I do like that. Um, Forman saying, I'm afraid, I've read that already. Tourista says, I'm a legend. I don't know, what does that word even mean? Uh, wafer thin shaving of the lug is the best, yeah. Uh, you are well trained to teach a class via Zoom. Hardly a, cha hardly a change at all from this. Forman, you know what? Imagine me lecturing on industrial design and everything else. I mean, I could. I could pretty much have a philosophy channel and just chat about all sorts. That'd be hilarious. Uh, Jonathan, my pleasure. I didn't say thank you to your for your submissions. I should thank you for sending in your submissions. Uh, it's a joy. I love the photography as well. We've got to commend. Photography is beautiful. It's it's you know, very much how we as pedestrians, when I say pedestrians, me and so many others, this is how we this is our best example of wrist shots. But then there are others out there who take these ridiculously good photos. This is 
this is clear cut. <clears throat> it feels almost, geez, I really must have spiked the mic there. It feels almost realistic in the way it's been shot. It doesn't feel overblown or oversaturated or the lighting is just right and all of the stuff. It just, it feels like what you would see when you're wearing the piece, you know? Yeah, love it. So day date 41. And then on the right, we have a date just 41. And isn't it interesting seeing these two? You can generally define the day date by its Romans. We featured this before, but uh, it's it's just it's just cool. Uh, Wonder of Watcher says, I am just wondering if you think that size bias is becoming a thing of the past, especially with the smaller reissues of field watches. No, I still think the size bias is there. Um, it's funny. It's, it began to be talking about the watch community itself. We're not talking about the broader population. Within the watch community, I think there is there's a stigma about watch sizes and how it needs to be a certain element. And I think that there comes a point where size just gets too much for the watch. And if you're not going to present everything as correct, you know, with regards to battens and with regards to hands and how much negative space you have on the dial, sometimes it just, it just goes, there's lots of lost area that I think a smaller size can tighten up. Oh, geez, lots of questions. One saying the day date 40, sorry, I called it the 41. Day date 40. I love seeing these two together. You can see that the pro, the similarities and differences, presidential bracelets, jubilee, fluted bezel, uh, and your standard standard bezel uh, layout. Really enjoy the, uh, the Roman X at the 10. That is just so modern. You know, it feels, it does feel very modern as far as day days go. And then we get a sample of it on the wrist. Juan, your shots have been amazing. I've said this before that Juan is the most dedicated for these live shows. He sends in, I don't know, 15 submissions, maybe more, 20 a week when, when he does. And I have to cherry pick. And sadly I do, but there are lots of duplicates and I have to find the best lighting or whatever works there. Uh, greetings from Mexico. Ernesto, welcome from Mexico. Pleasure having you here. Um, all right, Thomas says, do you prefer the gold day toner from earlier or those two on the screen now? Oh, good question, Thomas. You know, honestly, I'm someone who prefers the professional watch for the for the, its use, for its function. I would be using the watch for its chronograph, regardless of whether it's precious metals or not. In that way, I would take the professionals over this. I would take the Daytona, just because I would see myself more as someone with a feature to it, a function, over a date or a day date. I'm not a fan of dates on watches, as as many know. It's it's a it's a thing. It's like it's been bred into me. But dates on watches just they don't hook me. Um, I find dates to be a distraction. It's kind of like it takes you away from the now, appreciating the the timekeeping, and you're thinking about days ahead. I've said this in videos before. Great question, Thomas. Thank you. Um, so Teresa says, would you like to have in the market type of the Grand Seiko five watches, affordable watches with great dials? Yeah, I mean. As an example, it would be nice to see the prices of watches in that similar kind of category. The play date, yes, okay. So this is called the play date. I always get that wrong. Shy town, thank you. Platinum uh, day date, the play date. I do kind of like that that reference there. It's good. Yeah, and the rest of you here, thank you all who are joining. Blue shirt, pleasure having you here, man. Really, thank you for being a part of the show. And uh, yeah, it's nuts. Finish at 147. We're talking about when the show will finish. God, I don't know. I really don't know. Let's move on to the date, the date just 41. Now we can really appreciate the dial. Now, funny, we were just looking at the 36. I mean, if I scroll up just a couple of clicks and where is it? Uh, here. These are literally the same watches, just sized differently. How cool is that? 41 and 36. And this is the question I posed to you. We were talking about the size bias and the and the whole thing with scale and proportion. It's like, do you need all of this vacant space for the sake of presence? Or can you not just tailor it down? I mean, it barely looks like there's a difference. Eh? I find it fascinating how they've done this, where they've actually, they have in this sense scaled the batons and the hands correctly, where it does all line up very well, if I can find it again there. It's interesting, right? Very interesting. And we're talking quite a shift in size from, from 36 to 41. Yeah, it's great. This hobby always keeps you engaged. Look, if I had you, what if you had one shot? Is this is that that's that's M and M, right? That's um eight mile. What's the track? That's so good. I love it. Yeah, Eric, keep keep dropping these references. Keep me on the ball. I like it. Tag me in the chat. I was right. Nah, good, good. I'm still going. Uh keep dropping them in. I'll see if I can do it. 
I'm pretty good at, at identifying lyrics when I'm semi sober. Okay, another hit. I see uh, uh, Blue Shed mentioning take another shot. I will. Glenn Levitt. Okay, let's carry on to the next piece from Juan, which is A. How beautiful is this? I think he just picked this up. Grand Seiko, 40 mil summer. I think that's the designation or the Ricker, R I K K A. Reference. <clears throat> SBBGH271. Hmm. Easy to remember. So I look at the polishing. This actually, I, th I think we hold on a sec. There was talk about this a while ago with the um the birch variant with the white dial. The ten there, there is texture to the dial here a little bit. But what they've done here is they've actually made the watch a bit more fascinating by the way they've done the lugs. Check out the faceting here. They've got so many edges. One, two, three, four five on the inside there's probably six underneath there so there's six sides to one lug that's taking liar lugs to the next level don't you think stunning shots i mean on the with the green grass in the background amazing okay hitting the whiskey i'm running out i'm running low gs appears to have elong elongated lug length try and say that 10 times yeah it kind of does i think they have they have fiddled around the proportions a bit too but again, I've said this so many times. The thing that divides everyone's opinions, as most of us will agree here, is yes, it is a green dial, touristas. Having Seiko on the dial, as much as it's it's bad to say that they should take Seiko off for the diehards, taking taking Grand Seiko off, leaving the GS, putting the GS at the 12, enlarging it, maybe making the, the boss a bit thicker, a bit taller, and you're done. It would look amazing. It would have the same kind of pull as a date just. I mean, you've got the crown at the 12, no other superfluous details, but this is even better because it's just so tuned down for what it is. I, I love the simplicity of the piece. There's simplicity to the dial and then complexity to the way that the lugs work and the way the case forms and the, the crown recesses into it. It's a beautiful case. There's no denying that. Yeah, so fascinating. Um, also a shot of the clasp, which has its own debatable points that there's no micro adjust system to it there uh unfortunately i mean this is one area where seiko needs to pick up the ball that was one of the first things i did with the spb the the um the prospects i bought a marine master clasp for it and it just changes the watch completely you have full micro adjust you've got proper a proper dive extension uh titanium infused it's fantastic so i mean i should photoshop this I really should. I mean, this is easy. Just take the Grand Seiko logo, make it larger, fill the space. I should have done it for the show, but you know, <laughs> I was inebriated. Is that the right word? On drugs. But uh, yeah, nice looking piece. Really is nice. And there's the movements. I don't know why you do this Grand Seiko, but having the, the lion there, why? I can appreciate the movement. I mean, that's the whole point of the. <laughs> and I want to talk about high beat. That's a good point there. Um, missing you in the chat many are saying couldn't agree more thank you everyone i mean gee i don't know i'm just standing on my soapbox here uh gs would be just fine it would be an interesting exercise if anyone represents grand seiko watching the show <laughs> you know nice be a nice idea dominic absolute pleasure oh nice les paul you got there dominic thanks for the super chat this if you also it looks like a tobacco burst beautiful uh, just got a chance to jump in my pleasure there's still a lot more coming up in a second, which you'll enjoy. So Flieger says, regarding high beats, 36,000, anyone has experienced when it comes to service? That's the downside of high beats. You know, you, you're wearing the parts a lot faster. But what a beautiful presentation. I think the green dial is stunning, olive drab. I think these are golden elements to it. I don't know if it's green. It's hard to tell in this light. But just as a package, look at the presentation. Yeah, they're doing business. Grand Circo is doing a good, a really good job. Right, let's jump to some like a crazy, just a, okay, let's get to this piece here. So Hamilton, <clears throat> now remember Juan knows, he loves his vintage and he does share his vintage pieces with us a lot. <laughs> Mark says wrong. Thank you, Mark. I like discourse. That's good. Um, I deserve to be told that I'm wrong. It's another thing. I hate, I hate just praise in general. I think praise is good when it's warranted, but then when it's, you know, when it's too much, uh, Hendrix said it the best. Um, okay. So this piece, the Hamilton Langley Packard Motors Award Watch in 14 carat white, gray, gold. Now, this is an old machine. Hamilton and their past, I mean, Juan knows his movements 
like crazy. He knows his, his vintage pieces, especially Hamilton. And so the story goes that this piece was awarded to, presented to O.L. Davies Jr. by the Packard Motor Company, Appreciation of Years of Loyal Service, 1930. And it's a tonneau-shaped case, right? And uh, this movement, I can't remember what he specified about the movement. This is the shot of the movement, I think. And look at the, oh, it's beautiful. Look at the way they inscribed it, you know, hand engraved there and look at all these screws on the balance. It's awesome. Juan loves his outliers. He loves his modern stuff. Don't get us wrong. But then he also has these crazy cool outliers like Hamilton reversos and just things we never see in the wild. Okay. So catching on. No, that was not meant for you. No, Mark, it's all good. I'll take it. I'll take it on the chin. Uh, moving through. So Chaitan says, GS is the king of flies in the ointment. <laughs> Always some nitpicking thing that drives me nuts. Yeah. But I mean, again, this is the this is the pedantic design guy talking about, you know. Uh, the majority of people out there get into a watch because they like it, and that's and that's all that needs to be said. They don't need to pick it apart. Uh, it's it's in white gold, so it's white gray gold. It's fascinating, it really is. I love the the Breguet type, just classic. Okay, moving on. Now this one really caught my attention. We were chatting about um, Paul Newman Daytonas and Speedmasters earlier on. Let's have a look at this piece. Oh. What does this remind you of? Oops, magic mouse. This is like your reverse panda that you would see around that time. Now, this is, and I've saved a long description of this watch. It's a Hamilton Buren chronograph, Velju 7736. Hamilton bought Buren in 1966 and utilized Swiss-made Buren movements in many of the Hamilton watches, and Buren utilized parts manufactured by Hamilton in the USA. So kind of like a cross collaboration between uh, <clears throat> Tudor and Breitling that we're seeing now, this sharing of movements and parts. How cool is that dial? I mean, it's amazing. That's stunning. I, I love, this is just so typical of that 60s era sports chrono. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on in the chat that I'm going to try and catch up. Let's see what's happening here. See up stones, sympathy for the devil. Are you putting, are you dropping in more lyrics? A man of wealth and taste. Yeah, Eric, you've got to tag me. I've got to see these. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, miss them. I could have most definitely told you that was sympathy for the devil. Um, anyone else? Let's see what else is going on here. Uh, happy Saturday, all. Bobby Legs, welcome to everyone. <laughs> I haven't even said that to everyone. Welcome to the show and happy Saturday. Uh, beautiful reverse panda, though, right? It's it's such a nice presentation and a typical sports chrono of the time and this is what they were about you know function first no glitz no glamour no polish no uh no subtlety you know nothing to shout at you it was specifically made for the wrist to be used in action scenarios and uh what a beautiful i mean i love this shot this is one of my favorites juan you do take some amazing photos look at the domed plexiglass the t swiss on the sub dial i mean that is quite strange and it's just so typical of chronos of the time. I mean, that's what I love. It's a pity that watches aren't as simple as this anymore. Uh, you know, one side you could say, yes, these are very utilitarian focused, but then they also don't have much to offer in the sense of presentation. These weren't luxury items back in the day. They were just tools, functionally focused. And nowadays, watches are very much viewed as a luxury and are priced as such. So it's it's finding that balance. I'm sure many brands want to upmarket their their pieces by just adding filigree and, and aspects. Oh, we're gonna look at some awesome watches now. Two Vacherons, some of our favorites. I am not a soldier. Oh, Eric, I don't know that one. I don't know that one. The animals. <laughs> I'm gonna say the animals. Uh, some some Vietnam era song of, of any kind. Uh, Russell, happy Sunday. You're right. We're past twelve o'clock. That's hilarious. Hello, is anyone there? No, I don't know that one either, Eric. Now you're giving me the hard ones. Um, okay. The doors. Scores on the doors. Oh, jeez. Okay. So next up, let's jump to... Okay, now we have two Vacheron overseasers that we're going to have a look at in a second. Here's one of them. Uh, blue dial. I think the next one is also going to be a blue dial. But it's so funny how this watch has just climbed in value and everyone's jumping on them because they can't get the APs. They can't get the Nautili. It's a cool piece, but what James says, if James Arthur is watching, uh, it's too Vatican for me. I love it. And he says something like, I love it. I need to go, every time I wear this, I feel like I need to go to confession because of the Maltese cross. You know, it's all religious based. Uh, it's just, it's just so good. I think it's hilarious. 
but it's true. I mean, they do overemphasize the Maltese cross a lot, and it can be a bit heavy-handed in a way. Um, but saying that, the bracelet is amazing. I think that whole cross section there is nice. The bezel is also true to the the 222 in a way, and it's kind of been the staple of the overseas line. The Maltese cross, I love. Question, would you prefer the Maltese or the Calatrava cross on your watch? I, I do like the, the simplicity of the Maltese cross. Also enjoy how they've done the movement on these. Uh, we're going to have a look at another one on a rubber strap later on, but it's a beauty. But I want to focus on the next Vacheron, which is a joy. Uh, yeah, so bet your mama didn't know you could scratch like that, Mark. Nope, that one also slips me. Uh, we come from the land of ice and fire, right? The ice and snow. Are we talking? That's uh, that's uh, Zeppelin, right? That's uh, immigrant song. I'm guessing, Eric. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I'm gonna get sidetracked. Uh, uh, if the sun refused to shine, that's also Zeppelin, and it's uh, this one. I'll, I'll never be able to think of it off my head. Um, it's an acoustic song, though. That's that's as good as I'll get. Anyway, anyway, stop the. Okay, moving on. So let's jump to the Vacheron 56. This is a watch I know Blue Shirt loves, adores, appreciates. Oh, it's a crazy. And this is such a, this looks like a morning shot that he took or somewhere between the trees. Look at that dial. They've done an excellent job with it. I mean, so true to the 50s with the dial arrangements. I mean, that numeral, the numeral arrangement we don't see anymore. It's, I don't even know how you would describe it. It's kind of like, um, California dial in a way, but not really. Uh, I don't actually know the, the term they use for that, that dial. Thank you. That's it, Eric. Oh, God. Thank you. I was I was close enough. I'm pretty sure it's the same album. It's around the acoustic. Was it was it oh, Houses of the Holy? Is that the, that's the album, right? Um, yeah. So we got day, date, month, moon phase. It's the full package, but it's just it's just captured. Yes, in the morning. I judged by the angle of the sun. Don't know how I got that right. But yeah, it's beauty. It really is. The size. It's not a watch for everyone, though. And this is kind of where we sit in the ballpark of the whole reissue area of... We're actually chatting about beautification with their watches. And here's, here's another example of a piece that is seriously beautified for what it is, but it's also polarizing. And it's, it's made for the enthusiast. So, uh, yeah, love it. How cool has the selection been? I, that's these shows, Russian Roulette. And funny, we're going to have a look at one of my favorites in the lineup in a second, and it's a reverso. Um, Mark says, no, Zepp Zeppelin 1, was it really? F no, Zeppelin 2. Guys are now debating on where Thank You came from in the Zeppelin lineup. <laughs> so cool. Oh, geez. I do love a good Led Zeppelin. I mean, it's, it's, I love the, when you're someone who appreciates, you know, the music making, you can really appreciate Zeppelin by how they broke up their skill sets and uh, Bonzo on the drums. It doesn't stop. Okay, Juan, beautiful. Absolutely loved your pieces. Everything from modern to vintage in between. And, you know, it's, it's how we roll with Juan. But next up is Ken with the Reverso. Oh, guys are debating Zeppelin 1, 2, or 3 as far as albums go. Ooh. I'm a bit partial to Zeppelin 2. And I do like Zeppelin 4. Okay, so Reverso. The reverse of a tribute to 1931. Now, on the 4th of March, I believe, a couple of days ago, uh, the reverse celebrated its 90th anniversary, its 90th birthday. And uh, he sent this watch to me on the day of its 90th birthday, not knowing that it had a story. So I sent him an email back saying, this, be sure to celebrate with the watch tonight because of its, its birthday. This watch, this exact watch, is the tribute to the original that came out then. So I love it. It's really stunning. And the funniest part of all is that he said he bought it when he was in South Africa, which is, I didn't even know South Africa stocked these kinds of watches, but apparently they do. So 19, the 90th anniversary, this is literally three days after it. And this is, you know, the, <laughs> I would say the epitome. I think the, the, I think they call it the extra thin. The extra thin 1931 Reverso is just, it's a charmer. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Level 42. Yeah, break on through the other side, Eric. That sounds sounds pretty relatable. Guys are still quoting music. I mean, it must be getting quite boring if you're now chatting about music tracks, right? Uh, yeah, it's a stunning piece, though. 73 MAF. It's all you need out of a dress watch, right? And uh, I love the story. It's very unassuming for what it is, what it represents. But that's the beauty. Okay. 
going to move on next. Ken, thanks for this. I hope you celebrated its birthday the other day. To Keith. Oh, okay. <laughs> this was funny. So he sent in all of these shots, oops, all of these pieces here in one shot. And he's also wearing, oh, come on, man, magic mouse. Uh, it's so finicky. So just at a certain point where it just decides to have a mind of its own. I think it's its time of the month. So uh, this is his sports selection of pieces. And he says, the tag started the collection 15 years ago. That's this beast, the link. I'm sure most of us can relate. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Mark, thanks. Uh, this watch pretty much started most collections today, I think. Um, started the, selection, the collection 15 years ago and have acquired most of these pieces last year during lockdown and find myself still not happy and fulfilled laughing face so uh, i can i can understand that i mean we have the, the selection i mean how cool is this lineup hit the sack don't even talk about me there eric uh so use the arrow keys that's not a bad idea wonder of watches you know what i'm gonna do that it's dumb of me i guess that's the alcohol i'm gonna hit some coffee and get back pick a card any card or the tiger says so what do we have? We have the Seamaster Great White in the top right section. We have a gilt dial. We have an OP34, awesome champagne arrangement. This looks like the 1861 Speedmaster, and he has, this looks like quite a small clasp on this professional, so I'm guessing it's probably an Explorer 39, judging by the size of the clasp. Could be wrong. But then it's it's finding that balance. I mean, that's the difficulty. I think the reason why, Keith, if you're, if you're watching, uh, missing a Rolex sports professional. Uh, Megan, I think he's wearing something. I mean, it's got an oyster locking clasp here. So uh, I think the reason why you're missing it, Keith, this is just my, my pedantic eye, is the watches all feel kind of the same. That makes sense to me, to you. <laughs> if it makes sense to anyone. Um, the the batons, the, the plot arrangements, it's like, uh, it's, it's difficult to pinpoint. But I feel like the watches are very much the same in the way they present themselves. They're all steel. They're all sports watches. They they do have a bit of differentiation between them when we look at the bracelets. But you know, on the whole, they kind of are similar. Uh, full house watches. Yeah, Taristas, I agree. I'm missing you in the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bonaventure says, you can edit the Apple Mouse functions and settings. I'm going back with two fingers. You know, the, the haptic feedback motor is broken, and I've tried to fix it. There's nothing I can do. I have to sadly chuck this one, but uh, I always usually have it haptic, but it's not working anymore. So, yeah, so my thinking is when I look at these is that they feel very similar, very much the same. Wondering if you actually are wearing an Explorer here because this watch kind of ticks the Explorer box. But then you need to spend more time with each piece too to really find that, that affection or the other way around. Uh, just not appreciate the watch. Lovely backdrop, Eric says. So funny. I have no idea what he's wearing, 73 MAF. I really don't. But, you know, the, the, I, I would say, Keith, the best thing you could do is take each watch and wear it solidly for a week. Come to terms with how you feel about it. Uh, it's, it's such a difficult thing. Finding your taste, it takes a long time, I can tell you. I mean, it's, it's peculiar where I am in the hobby because I love watches with Arabics. Arabics on a dial. It just sings to me, whether it's a dive watch, whether it's a daily, you know, just a, a dress piece. I'm not so much of a fan of of the, what do you call it, the strokes and dots on, on a dial as much as, as numerals. And that's just the thing. It's finding your taste. And I guess you have to go through a lot of pieces to do it. I would agree. But it's so difficult to hone in on just why you're not feeling a connection with them. But uh, what brand is the watch, uh, was the watch he was wearing with the gray strap? Alika says, I don't know. Are we talking about this? It's a, it's a steel Rolex that he's wearing at the moment. Yeah, so all boxes ticked, simple no date, retro diver, big modern diver. And that's the thing. I mean, it's it's the difficulty when coming to that perfect meeting point where you seem to have everything checked. You've got a chrono, like a brilliant sports chrono. You've got a brilliant dress watch with the champagne or it's perpetual. You have an excellent diver, a very retro inspired tribute diver. But then you have the modern take by the speed the Seamaster. And then it's like, well, could you not just clear it up a bit more by replacing the Seamaster and the Tudor with the Submariner? Uh, replacing this with, I don't know, a Reverso maybe, or something a bit further down the dress line, the dress sports area. 
I yeah, agree. It's a stunning pick. I do love seeing these cluster shots because especially when there's a question or, or a statement tags to it there. Uh, Russell says lots of black dials, room for color. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's Keith. I'd love to see more of this. Send in more questions, more statements. I'd be interested in knowing how your tastes change over time. But there's there's a lot here. There's a lot. Okay, moving on to Chronic Craze. Such a difficult question. I think it's something, it's this crisis that we all struggle with in the collecting space. It's, I have it all, but I don't feel satisfied and I don't know where I should be going. And uh, yeah, my best, my best advice would be to just wear it for a week, wear each piece and, you know, think hard, long and hard about what is it about the watch that speaks to you. Are you just picking these watches up? Another thing is these watches are all ones that are spoken about a lot. They're hyped up a lot. We see them everywhere. And I think social media has a problem in that sense where we collect what everyone else does to feel accepted by the group. Because everyone collects it, it seems like a sure thing and it's something that we would enjoy, but then you're not finding your taste as much. So yeah, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Thank you, Keith, for this. Moving next to Chrono Craze. Now, this is cool. It's Lysine, but it's not an airman. Jason Bourne watch. I don't know what's going on in the chat. Uh, diamonds for Thomas Burnett. Yeah, Thomas loves his diamond dials. I mean, he couldn't go without them, right? Uh, yeah. Any more questions to me? Tag me in the chat. Got to keep this rolling. Got to keep my brain active. Um, so this looks like an airman, but this is in fact called the chief. And he gave me a brief description about the watch. Uh, the reference is GL03251. Let's see some other examples. I don't know if I did, yeah, I did save a description. Uh, it's a rare model that was marketed for Navy, whereas the Airman was for the Air Force. I did not know that. I really didn't know that. But as as Eric says, purist. I mean, this probably is the purest watch if you're getting really down to it. Uh, and Chrono Craze knows his stuff. He has a really cool selection of pieces. Uh, so, yeah, I love it. I think that little added touch of saying, no, it's not for the Air Force, it's for the Navy. But there's like zero difference. It's just they branded it differently. And this is the more fitting strap, you know, Marine National kind of paracord related Navy. I like it. I really do like it there. And just, I mean, the Airman is such, not the Airman. See, I'm used to calling it the Airman. The Chief, the Glycine watch that this emulates uh, is such a crazy monster. I mean, it's it's so in line with those 50 stylings. It was the original GMT. I mean, it's, it's a character in itself. It was a big deal back in the day. Uh, 35 mils, pilots would be wearing these in choppers can you imagine uh, it's very cluttered i wouldn't say i wouldn't say it's it's, it's similar to the nav the navi timer the 806 that we looked at earlier it's not something that you can just pick up and read the time very easily it takes it's something you have to learn to read you know orange hand is joining us we're chatting about you earlier orange hand with, a, with an example of a luminox where the watch was entirely orange. Now, I think this is a 30, it's, it's either a 38 or it's a 42, or maybe it's a 40, I don't know. Glycine's doing some amazing sizes there. They're attacking it at all angles. Cool watch, really is nice. It's a stunning, stunning example. Uh, Neo, thanks for the super chat, Neo. says, can you quickly recap the last two hours for me? I wasn't around. I can try. Uh, let's move on to the next piece. Ooh, with an offshore. Oh, I love this. Chrono Craze beautiful watch amazing photography too he sent in a whole handful of pieces and this is a gem megan asking oh hold on all in a movements welcome penny uh, did you share your thoughts on the possibly new milgaus yay or nay hmm not this year no i don't think so we can chat about that too let's first get to neo's question about recapping the last two hours how can i best sum it up um you know the usual ramblings rantings ravings what points have been addressed? We talked about beautification very quick, very early on, talking about how beautification is being put aside for a more utilitarian focus with many sports watches. Uh, I was chatting about the the discourse in the collector space a little bit for a while. I don't know. We go through like fifteen topics per show, but uh, you know, yeah, there's a lot. Great question though, Penny, about the Milgaus. So similar to the Air King and to the Datejust 41, another example, the Milgaus is a watch that's going to be cold, I think, pretty soon. And the question is, how will they address it? And I guess we all want to see a 1019 recreated in that space, but uh, that's not going to happen. It's funny. I mean, there's no knowing, really. You can be as pedantic as you want. You can do what I do and try and logically step out the process of 
how they have released watches in the past and how they have you know addressed watches from three years ago and how that could factor into their new releases now but the reality is there's no knowing never all they could do is change a color scheme and that's the that's the job it's a laugh penny welcome to the show again uh Guys chatting about steaks now, I see. That's that's good. Uh, we like a good steak on the show. This is a st- I've never seen this offshore before. And that rhymed. It's the 42 mil and it's the reference 26480TI. Rolls off the tongue. How would we describe these hands? I'll use I'll type the word in the chat and you can agree or disagree. But uh yeah, I've never st- I think that's the thing that first kind of grabbed me K- kidney beans and chianti eric that's funny that's uh silence of the lambs gotta love i mean that's such an amazing film sure this is anthony hopkins nailed it it's so amazing i you look at the deep dive of his character analysis and how he doesn't blink in certain scenes it's just it's fascinating he really was a psychopath on the set you know these hands are just they're bonkers but they're, that's the first thing that i saw but I love how this offshore integrates the uh, the pushes at the sides here and how there's this evacuated you know, mechanical sort of feeling. It's just, it's well addressed for what it is. Uh, and we move on and look at a few more. This was on a walk. Uh, this is from, did I even say it's from Michael? Michael, thank you for sending this if you're here with us. But uh, it's, a, it's a gorgeous example here. 42 mils, a monster on the wrist. But also just well, I mean, look at the crosshairs on the dial. I don't know what this what this tributes to, if this is for a, a navy inspired piece or if there's something else to it. But as far as balance goes and presentation, yeah, pretty, pretty damn good. Awesome shots. So I'll just hold on to this for a while and catch up with what's going on in the chat. I think this is one of the only there's another really cool AP chronograph. My my actual favorite in the line we're gonna look at later. Uh, let's see what else is happening here. And I'm missing you all, as always. Uh, let's see. No questions directed to me. I'm I'm offended. Ladies and gentlemen, ask me something. Keep my brain going. I'm just talking over myself. Yeah, that's, that's stunning. Let me try and think of more things to recap the show to Neo. Uh, we have looked at quite a large selection of Rolex pieces, a couple of outliers. Uh, nothing too crazy until we jumped to Megan's pieces where we looked at the RIP HYT segments where we were having a laugh at that. Uh, had a look at amazing tourbillons and others. Uh, Brent, uh, Brent says, yeah, I do that sometimes as well. Switch up the size every evening. Sorry, I don't know what you said. Hey there. I don't know. I'm sorry, I, I caught the back end of that. Really nice looking piece though. I think the, uh, the way the offshore and the, the Royal Oak lines have such a good congruence when we talk about the crowns and the, the fitted screws that are reverse fitted, you know, from underneath. Yeah, it's great. And these watches are just, the, it's so funny how uh, how the hell do they put those screws in? It's very easy, point of venture. These aren't screwed in. They're actually just pushed, dropped in. And from underneath, it's secured by a, what would you call it? Is it a bolt? I don't know if you would call, I think you would call this a, um, this is like, okay, this is the male section of the attachment and the female section, which is like a, a hollowed out uh, threaded component is then fitted from underneath. And that's what secures the bezel on. I believe. And I, th- I don't know if you can see that from the back of the watch or not. I'm not that well versed, but that's it. You don't actually turn these screw heads. I mean, anyone who has a mechanical mind would know that if you try to turn these screw heads, <laughs> you'd have a good time. Uh, you'd not really understand why it's not working, but uh, it's great. Michael, thank you for this. Jumping to Mike next, and I love this. This is, we ha- have we looked at, we haven't seen one Explorer 2 yet. I, uh, I'm trying to think. No, we haven't. We've seen GMTs, but not. This presentation's amazing. So this is his daily. Explorer 2, black dial, uh, 42 mil. And I mean, there was a mention here, most of Mark is talking about the Ranger Explorer. Oof. <laughs> Forbin says, we still await an AP photograph in an actual porthole. Can you imagine how cool that would be? That would make us all smile. I would love to see that. Yeah, I agree. That's probably one of the best comments of the show. That's from Forbin. That's amazing. I love it. Uh, so, Mr. Marcus, the Tudor Ranger Explorer. I have this belief. I have this feeling that we're going to see something. I, I so hope they don't bring out another bloody Black Bay. I'm so sick of it, man. No more Black Bay. Try and, like, deviate. You can. It's easy. You know, 7995 slash zero from the 60s. It's such a beautiful, simple example. 38 mils, maybe even 39, whatever. Go for it. And they have such, I mean, the potential of that watch. 
the funny thing is the comments that I had on that video uh, on Instagram, on, on all the social media pages, the ranger was the one that everyone seems to want. And it could convert so many people over. If you hate the Rolex brand, if you hate Tudor as a brand, you love Omega, I guarantee you, you will be buying the Tudor Ranger. It's It's got its own character to itself. And there's so much potential. But again, this is coming from a creative person. Sadly, the creatives don't uh, interfere with the suits at the end of the day. So unfortunately we're probably just going to see another damn black bay uh, anyway so tackle box i didn't mention this i think this is fly fishing can someone can someone tell me flies are out mva homespun and this is you mike i thought fly fishing i mean this this is what they look like we did chat about fishing earlier on yeah it's it's awesome megan and as far as oh shaitan says would you break your no date rule if you could get a blro gmt master at retail Hmm. That's probably the one watch that I would. Yeah, I would. I mean, saying that I don't like dates, I think for a GMT, there is something quite important about having a date there. It kind of lines up with it as a function. Yeah, I mean, look, I've got a no date Seamaster and then picking up a date, a date GMT Rolex. I mean, that's perfect. It works so nicely. It's also quite the outlier. You've got a, a Jubilee bracelets. There's lots of factors. I do like the Bat Girl or the, the Bruce Wayne or whatever they call that model. But uh, yeah, I think, I don't know if I would enjoy the red and blue accents, but hell, it'd be a good experience. Awesome, again, awesome photo. And you can see as a daily where it goes. This is the beauty of the Explorer. I, if, if I can sum up the Explorer video, it's probably, it's probably being suggested to you if you scroll down a little bit, if you're watching this on a laptop or a phone or something. But the main, the main thing I want to try and hammer home about this line Oh, is that, is that paint actually coming off the eight? Hold on a second. No, damn it, it's a reflection. I wanted to see this bezel being abused. Um, is that the Explorer canvas is so broad. They have so much opportunity, so much creative potential, a lot more than the, the Submariners and the GMTs, which are, you know, the sad thing about this model is it's, you know, if you put a ceramic bezel on it, it'll look like another GMT. It won't look anything special, which is why, we seem to all have an agreement that this watch probably won't get a ceramic bezel. It's not hard to believe, or should I say not hard to disagree that they could go that way, but uh, they could do anything they want with the Explorer line and lots of just, yeah. But then again, it's Rolex and uh, they probably are just going to give us a different color and that's it. You know, deal with what you get. Okay. So going to move on through to the next. Oh, hold on. I think this is, <clears throat> excuse me. I think this is the same mic. I love this as a daily wearer. I think it's great, especially in the tackle box. It looks like it's fit for purpose. You know, it's, it's all you need out of the Explorer category. I don't know if this is the same mic. I think it's different. But this mic says he was finally able to travel and he got to rock his Aquaterra on the rubber. Nice example. Really, really nice. Beautiful photo too. We can enjoy just everything about the the brushing the horizontal slats the polishing the the rubber strap everything you know the materials are well expressed in this photo which is great i mean that really does add the character to it yeah as far as a daily wearing watch the thing is i mean do you want to be someone out there who wears a watch that's recognizable then the date just will be fighting in the streets that street fighting man rolling stones uh is it pretty sure Maybe I got it wrong, Eric. Um, that's so funny how I can jump to lyrics. Uh, so the Date Just is a watch that's very easily recognizable out there. But this, on the other hand, it's, it's something that would really fly under the radar. I do love how they've done the rubber strap integration and all of that too. It feels a bit more professional. Yeah, it's awesome. Really cool piece. Also enjoy the blued accents. The Who. Oh, gee, am I getting it wrong again? I'm losing touch. Bonaventure says, again, tag me in the chat if you want to catch me quicker. Um, Hans says, I salute you. I think it's, uh, uh, Explorer Polar is my favorite Rolex, but the 40 mil GMT and isn't uh, isn't orange, and the 42 is too big. Yeah, I mean, 42 as a size, it's a love it or hate thing, got to say. Oh, so this is a stunning shot, Mike. Really appreciate the just how you've captured all the texture and the polishing there and, and all of that cleanliness. Next up, though, Paul. I don't know if he's with us still. It's uh, half past well, 20 to 1 in the morning in the UK. Paul got the call this week. No one knows what it's like. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so it's behind blue eyes, Eric. Got that one. So Paul just got the call. And I, I actually put this in captions because I thought this was funny, but he picked up just speaking about the BLRO. The B, I never get, is that it? The BLRO, that's the reference. Um, I love how uh, got the call. I mean, that's a part of the lexicon now. You know, that's how anyone who says that immediately knows what it means. And that got me thinking that, you know, it's, it's maybe that's what the brand wants out of people. Again, congratulations, Paul. That's one way to start. I mean, hell, this is like the, the epitome, the epitome of, <laughs> of the Rolex GMT line. Uh, there it is me. Yeah. So maybe that's, I'm just thinking about it off the top of my head, got the call, maybe is something that what Rolex really wants out of their customers, out of their consumers. And uh, yeah, I love it. I find it, I find it pretty fascinating. So we talk about this as a, yes, I would most definitely uh, skip on the no date rule uh, out here in the fields. What's that? I can never, uh, it's, it's featured in all the, the damn CSI clips. What is it, man? I should know. I won't know this off the top of my head, Eric, but yeah, I do know that. I do know the track. Um, so yeah, I would most definitely break the rule for a GMT. Absolutely. This example in particular, I think they've nailed the colors a lot better here too. And it's, yeah, it's a gem. <laughs> well, I got, well, I got the call for my 58, 73 math. You know what? Bubba O'Reilly. Thank you, Hans. Thank you. Yeah, I'm losing touch. I'm losing touch. Got the call. I think so. So let's see what Mark says. They call us to say we are allowed to spend our money. It's, you know, that's not customer service. I just, I don't, I find it such a bizarre place. If, do we have any more Rolexes on here? I think this is one of the last, actually, would you believe? Um, but I find it so bizarre that this is where we are at at the moment, where, you know, you it's supposed to be a special occasion and everything. I can agree there, but, like, it's just too much. And the question is, what's going to happen in the future? Are they losing a lot of customers to many other brands because they can? Or because they, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's that's a whole... Another kettle of fish. Moving to Pekka next. And he sends in, now we're back to reality, a Stover Flieger UTA Unitas 6498. So this is the sterile dial, uh, A-style Flieger with a subdial. You don't see that very often. Nice. Rolex in 2021, Brandon. Yeah, it's, it's, and is it going to get worse? That's the question. It's like, as much as I, admire the people out there who can make a video on Rolex every single day, 365, and never get tired of it. Uh, I got to say that this repetitive showing, repetition is what makes it stick. And if someone is telling you that these things are going up in, in value and the demand is creeping up, so it will. And it's, yeah, it's, it bugs me. Being a creator in this space where you want to make videos about Alonga and Zona and you want to make videos about you know, the, the, the Patek travel times and how beautiful they are, or tourbillons or bezels and all this stuff. That's just overshadowed by Rolex predictions and Rolex design. And, you know, that can be quite frustrating. It frustrates me. I don't know how channels can survive and keep a, a sane head talking about the same stuff all the time. But, you know, whatever floats the boat, uh, as Eric would probably say. Yeah, sterile dial is a, is a gem. You can choose when you spec out these watches whether you want sterile dials, whether you want engravings on the movements and everything there. And uh, check out the, uh, the movement. How cool is this? I think this watch is like between 400 and 500 bucks. You're getting an ETA-based caliber. And you've got engraving. You've got finishing. You've got – I mean, it's really nice. You get to see the barrels. You get to see the, the balance there and the bridges. It's a little bit sharp for my liking, I think. It's a bit too industrial should be you know just just facet the edges and that's all clean it up <clears throat> rolex is the kardashians of watch gossip talk <laughs> you know i i'm in this this headspace where i i appreciate them as a brand i appreciate what they've managed to do and it's it's like levi's jeans and so many other icons out there they're great things to have i think it's an aspirational piece for many people i like that they've put themselves in that segment but then just the way people go about it now and thinking that it's holier than thou and if it's not rolex then it's not anything worth looking at and it's yeah 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 it's funny pekka awesome seeing this piece 
I uh, love seeing the presentation. It's a really nice example of a Flieger. I think it's 40 mils-ish, I would imagine. Uh, it's around 1,500. Oh, I really got that one wrong, Andreas. 1,500 euros. Excuse me. Uh, I guess the open back and the finishing does, in fact, add a bit more there. That's hilarious. To pound the drums next. I don't know if you're watching with us, but he sent in what is commonly called the Rolex Harley, the Harley Davidson. And this is another one of these outliers. I mean, it looks like a Flieger based model again. Uh, let's see what's going on in the chats. I actively avoid Rolex content because there's nothing else I want to know about them. I love content about interesting watches. Yeah, it's, it's such a divisive thing. We got Rolex up again. Um, Rolex are great, but there are so many other options that are amazing. So the antics don't bother me. Yeah. And it's, it's like I'm at this point where I feel so tired of looking at the same pieces in that category that, uh, I'm actively looking further into other areas, looking at brands like Zenith. I mean, it's amazing seeing how some of these names are managing to break the mold, <laughs> how, how Zenith caused all the controversy at the beginning of the year. And, and so it is, uh, yeah, hard to find the Rolex Harley. So it's pretty, okay, it's pretty rare. Uh, 34 mil, I think, right? It looks like just your standard Oyster Perpetual. These have all been phased out, of course. Um, <clears throat> check the loom. I love this loom shot. This is classic really nice and clean uh where do you ever see this we have loomed 369 loomed hands and nothing else just squint your eyes and have a look at it it's very conceptual you know modern oh it's 36 pound the drums yeah it looks like a 34 to me here when i see the i see the width fascinating and the the rounded bezel is also it's one of my favorite aspects of these uh these perpetuals the rounded bezel is just such a win uh Cat Stevens, yeah, it's still going, still going. Oh, you guys, you guys, so, so Hans and Eric are quite literally having a music lyric off session. Uh, not debating about rugby anymore, I see. Uh, that was good. The Wales English game caught that. That was, that was fascinating. Uh, yeah. Who's been watching the Gallagher Cup? Gotta love a good rugby game. And this is a shot, I called it glove, glove and leather jacket. It's really nice. Good presentation. And so what you don't see, you can't really identify this as a as a Rolex, which I like. It's nice to see a bit of difference there. Andreas says, imagine if there was loom in the Rolex Coronet. Yeah, I mean, that's one. They've already broken the mold by this presentation. Can you imagine? Uh, yeah, yeah. What difference does it make? I guess, I don't know, talking about the watch. Yeah, yeah whatever. Carrying on through to Raymond. Oh, we got so, it's amazing that the selection of pieces, the variety is just non non stop. Right to Raymond next. And would you believe he's wearing Time Factors Smith's PRS 26 in white, the reverse Everest? I didn't even know this watch came out, but you could say that this pays tribute to the Albino 1016 that came out in the 60s, I think, as like a, a prototype conceptual example here. And uh, he also sent in a cool, uh oh. Magic Mouse. He sent in a cool loom shot that we can enjoy a second ago. But got to say, it's done a good job. I should preface by saying I'm by no means sponsored by Smiths. I don't get paid to promote the watches. I get watches into review. And uh, in, in one case, I was able to put a bit of input into the creation of one. We're going to have a look at the commando a bit later in a moment. Uh, Shaitan says, chat talks about rugby. All the Americans leave the chat. That's funny. That's so funny. I love American football too. Don't get me wrong. I love, let's chat about American football too. Um, I, I really enjoy it. Not that I know everything and all the teams and players, but I, the strategies are incredible. Right. Uh, and then also, let's check out the loom. This is what's pretty cool. So we have like a reverse loom on the dial, which is great. C3 Luminova. Yeah, it's a gem. I've, I've, I've chat about, if you want someone to chat about Smith's watches, it's me. So I'd rather, rather Smith's or The Smith's. I've never been a fan of The Smith's, eh? As a band. I've never, no, a bit too indie for my taste. Is that bad to say, Mark? <laughs> yeah, I prefer Smith's as, as the watchmaker. That's funny. It's good. Brought it back to music. Um, to Rob next. Raymond, thank you for this. Jump into Rob. And this, he sent in a few shots, but Somehow the JPEGs that he sent in were broken, unfortunately. But uh, this one, Ares Winter Soldier, and I think it was specced for a branch of the military. I think it was for the SEALs. Uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. But really nice presentation overall. I mean, I love the, the red accent on the crown. The crown being put at the 10 o'clock. So, so weird. It's bizarre. Uh, you have everything I love about a watch. You've got quarter Arabics. You've got sword hands. You've got batons. 
the red accent of the hand, I don't know. I'd probably remove it. What I would do though, if it was me, I would I would keep the hand silver and put a red outline around the triangle and leave it there. So you got the red triangle, you've got the red on the crown, and it's nice and clean. Yeah, my home city, San Diego, has a professional rugby team. They're called Legion. Uh oh, microphone. Hold on a sec. Got a bit of a technical issue. Microphone almost fell off the desk. Uh, the Legion. It's nice to see that rugby is getting integrated into the Americans, the Americas. Uh, and, hell, there's some good players. We've had lots of, I know a lot of guys come and join the wings. Uh, I think sevens mainly, American sevens. they got a good side. Sevens rugby. Okay, hitting the coffee. Uh, I really, I implore you, anyone who doesn't watch rugby, uh, who's based in the States, I, I would implore you to check out rugby as a sport because it's nonstop. Very, very. <laughs> Do you think they're really pull through? I don't know what's going on in the chat. Okay, I'm carrying, carrying through. Rob, I think this is the same Rob. Don't know. But this is a, can you believe, a Vostok, Komandowski. And uh, we've seen a couple of these before. Very interesting. I mean, they've got so many arrangements of these pieces, and it's like endless. I think Eric Eric Bell would appreciate this watch. Uh, there's a lot of us out there who like them. Um, nice character to it. And it's it's an affordable, fun piece at the end of the day. It's something you can get into, enjoy, a smash about, use. Megan said, I watched All-American on Stan, learned about American football. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know what got me into watching American football, but it was just, I, f I just found it fascinating. I try and I try and make sense of the American rules with, with hockey and everything there, but American football definitely, I just, I love the stadiums and the, 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 the fanfare and the cheerleading and the, the, the crowds. And yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'd love to go see a game one day. Uh, yeah, given the chance. Anyway, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's a game that you can really sit down and take in. And whenever there's, there's a break, whenever there's, you know, when you've got re resetting the field, you can breathe a little bit where rugby is just nonstop. It just doesn't end. Really cool piece. I love, I do love a brushed bezel. Speaking of which, uh, next week, be all about bezels. Should be a fun time. Next to Rob L. Called you Rob L. And uh, I love this. This is, now we're getting into the micro brand, all of a sardine. So this is a E-O-N-E, e -O -N -E, Bradley, times KBT. So he gave me a great description of this watch too. And speaking purely from an industrial design perspective, I've seen this. How is that coffee still warm? Wonder of watches. You won't believe, but I actually prefer drinking coffee at room temperature. How sacri How much that is? That is pure sacrilege. You know, that is pure sacrilege. So, what makes this watch so cool? I looked at this. I've seen a few of them in the past. Never really caught them. But then I looked at this and said, this would be perfect for someone who's blind. Okay, you have a dial that's easily readable. You can feel the ball. This this one, <laughs> you can feel the ball uh, at the three o'clock. So that's where the, the the hour is and the minute is on the outside here, on the out edge. So it's really interesting. And the way this collaboration worked is Bradley Snyder, US Navy, blinded diffusing bombs in Afghanistan, became a, Paralympic <clears throat> became a Paralympic gold and silver medal winner. And the basically the, the profit that comes off the sales of these watches go to the Kilimanjaro Blind Trust. So lots of things going on. It's, I, I really dig hard, as far as, if you give this watch to a designer, they will appreciate it for its presence, for what it does. It's very hard to design for the blind. You won't believe. Um, I play wheeled rugby, not not at all rugby, really wheeled and well armed. I'd like to know how that works. I've never seen a wheeled rugby game. Wow. So it's. I would imagine it's kind of. I guess you'd have to pass forward. It's kind of like American football in a way that you can pass forward. How are you tackling? I'm very interested in knowing. That's something very cool. Uh, Mark says, we'd love to see a video on Vostok. I need to do one. That is definitely in the pipeline. Um, and now we're killing joke 1980s. I don't know what's going on. Okay, carrying on. This is the next shot from Rob. This is the uh, the movement. I guess I appreciate all the facets here. And I think how cool is that the lugs articulate? More watches need to adopt the, the Ulwerk way of articulating lugs. No, Debethun, sorry. The Debethun approach of articulating lugs. This is a good example here. Yeah, really sharp. Nice presentation. The Bradley. <laughs> That's one way to cap it off. Titanium case uh, assembled in, does it say Samoa? I, I can't read it. Korea? I don't know. Yes, it is. South Korea. Okay. Moving on. 
Rob, thank you for this. We're jumping to Ron next with a Speedmaster. Oops, Magic Mouse. We featured this once already. This is insane. Oh, the variety, it's actually taking the energy out of me by just how diverse, <laughs> you know, it just, it just blows me away. The show is just, it's Russian roulette all the time. So Seamaster 40, this is a, Seamaster uh, 42, sorry, uh, 1.8, what is it, 1861 movement, just the, the simple old, simple old classic, old faithful. Thomas says, loves the articulated lugs. Don't you think more brands should be doing it, Thomas? I agree. I, I like, it just, it makes, it's, it's not only catering for the big wrist, but it can also cater for the smaller wrist. And it can just basically end up with a more comfortable fit for anyone, you know? Um, so yeah, he sent in a few more shots. We had a look at the Speedy already. Nice presentation. He did say that these are the, the cornerstone watches in his collection, which is cool. I've never seen this piece before. It's called the, the Islander ISL 54B. Um, Another example of a great, you know, field watch focus, very Flieger inspired in a way, core to Arabics, orange accents, nice and clean. It's got a rally strap, which is cool. Uh, one, one forty-five. I'm seeing a comment from Hans. Is that? Oh, geez. You reckon? You reckon that'll be the, the closing time at the end of the show? Probably. I reckon. We've got a few left. I would say. I mean, we've just hit the three-hour mark. No, pretty good. Getting there. Nice presentation. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I can't keep up with the lyrics, Eric. I've got to, I've got to keep focused on the show now, I think, at this point. Uh, the energy is definitely zapping out of my brain. Really nice piece, though. Really enjoy how simple it is and understated. It looks like a 40 mil. Could be wrong there. Long Island Watches. Is, that, is this the collaboration project, Mr. Marcus? I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I don't watch many watch YouTube pages. If I'm not making content, then it's like get away from watches as much as possible. You know, <laughs> it's difficult. It's difficult to balance the hobby and the passion. It's in my passion. Moving on. Another shot from Ron is a selection of Seiko <clears throat> turtles. And I'm going to hit Fisherman's Friend. Once the balls drop, you've got to know it's Fisherman's Friend time. Right. Please be cherry. If it is black current. Don't know what will happen. Wormwood scrubs. Turn off your mic. Turn off your mic. Turn off your mind. Relax and float downstream. That sounds like uh, Lucy in the Sky with diamonds. Uh, Mark, maybe. No. <laughs> so, so Islander is a re reproduction of a bunch of watches, including Seiko's by Mark from Long Island Watches. Thank you, Megan, for that. I honestly didn't know. And for everyone else you mentioned, Mr. Marcus and and Wonder of Watches. Yeah, it's good. I mean, for any of us who are creative in this space, it's good to see these collaboration projects. Um, I don't know what it's based on exactly, where this piece was inspired by there, but uh, let's have a look at these two turtles. We haven't had, we haven't checked out Seiko much tonight. Uh, we have a SRP 777 on the left, Eric says, so prospects lineup. And this one, I think I mean references, 615, 6105, something or other next thing. Uh, 007 thank you for the thank you for the comment that's hilarious yeah yeah you notice i don't ask for likes and all that stuff that doesn't as long as the content's good that's all that matters to me i hope it's enjoyable uh, at the end of the day uh, thank you though really thank you all right so awesome pieces got a great selection here in the seiko lineup and i mean as far as variety goes funny enough we're just jumping to the next one uh ron thanks for this we're jumping to satya next i think he sends these in from india and, uh-oh, oh, I'm back. Please don't crucify me, but I'm going to guess this is a jasmine flower. Jasmine flower, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but this is the new and improved Seiko Alpinist. And I think it's a watch that deserves a bit more attention now because this is the first time that we are seeing it in a different colorway since a long time. I made a video looking at like a 60-year development of the Alpinist a, a while ago, a long time ago. And this is the current lineup. They've got a white dial. They've got a black dial. They've kept the, the old original green. But I think it's a great looking watch in this configuration. It's very true to the 50s format that they're trying to go with. And I mean, it's it's crazy. It's it's the adventurer's watch. It feels like the mountaineer's watch. That was the whole the whole idea. Petunia, flip and zipper. No, please don't don't do that to me. <laughs> not this not this late in the evening. Uh, so we have cathedral hands we have what we saw on the, the vacheron 56 very 50s kind of arrangement we have inner rotating bezel with a compass complication which is like 
what? You know, it's practical. I mean, talk to actual navigators and explorers out there and they'll tell you how practical it is to have a compass on your bezel, uh, especially when all your electronics freeze at certain temperatures. And uh, I love listening to Mike Horn. He's a great, he's a great uh, inspiration in that field. Um, YouTube version, turn off your mic, uh, it's relax and float downstream. I don't know what's going on. Mark might need to clear that up for me, but uh, yeah, it's good. Thank you, everyone. Again, I haven't said this enough, but thank you all for joining and for being a part of the show and for being awake and listening to me prattle on for all these hours. It's uh, it's a laugh. It's a joy. The flower is a gardenia, Shaitan. Did I really did I really get that wrong? Here I'm thinking it's a jasmine. Here I'm thinking that once I can get it right. I mean, my mother is so big on horticulture, and I can't even tell you what a flower is. I guess that's where your passion lies, you know? Anyway, awesome looking example. And the best part is we get to enjoy a loom shot. Look at that. Yeah, I got to say, Seiko, I, this is one thing I appreciate from the brand is they really are like making leaps in a good few areas. Even though they're jacking up the prices of these watches, um, it's nice to see that they are diversifying their selections and putting more attention to detail into certain, to certain pieces there. Yeah. It's cool. Got to say. Moving on next. Satya, thank you. Jumping to Scott with a diamond date just. Now, this is the exact model that we saw a while ago, just with a diamond set around it. I don't know if it's factory, but I find it quite fascinating how you see these. There's so much divide in the date just category, in the dress Rolex category, where you know, some really prefer the, the dressed up, the more blingy arrangement of, of the, the diamond, uh, diamond dial. And then some who just prefer the sports aspects to it. This does scream 90s and 80s to me, you know. The, <laughs> Chai Tan, this is good. The beautification of a utilitarian watch. Anyone who's been watching since the beginning, this sums it up. Scott, this is it. Chai Tan, you've, you've, you nailed it there. Uh, I think it's a 36 mil. Really cool piece. And this is... We've only, how many date dress have we seen? We've pretty much only seen like three and all of them have blue dials. How crazy is that? Uh, yeah, love it. Nice piece, nice presentation. Diamonds, whether they're for you or not, that's that's divided. Uh, and S ST says, yes, it's factory. Okay, my watch, 2017. Thank you, ST. So Scott, it's really good. Really nice to see. It's amazing that <laughs> so many of you are joining in to listen to me rattle on and i don't know how long you've been there for but uh the setting of diamonds doesn't look to be factory now scott just told me that they, they are if i zoom in let's have a close look i mean the setting you can tell by the way it's been arranged yeah fascinating really stunning model and the question is where will diamond uh inserts go will they at this point are they more aimed to the female audience or do you think the male audience will start picking them up again? I guess they really are popular when we look at the hype watches like the the rainbows and the, I don't even know what they call them. Yeah, I can't keep track with them. Scott, thank you for this. This is good. This comes in from Simon. Funny, another date just, but this is, uh, he calls this my watch journey. This is Oslo, by the way, sunset. So I liked this. He started with a Casio F91W. First watch. Uh, this one, I'm sure he's had replaced over time. And for his 30th birthday, picked up Datejust 41. So yeah, you see how we, we go through leaps and bounds in this hobby and we go along this road. It's quite commendable when you see where you start and where you end up. I must say the F91 was probably the first watch I probably ever saw as a, as a kid. I remember seeing them on the wrists of kids in my class and I didn't know what what they were uh nice sync russell says russell has a good eye for detail and i've just noticed they actually are in perfect time that's the bonus with these you can actually you know it's kind of atomic time it's exactly three seconds past and i like it it's good very good thanks for that russell i wouldn't have noticed uh yeah nice arrangement and again i love hearing these stories it's uh it's great to see just how people develop in this hobby and how they can eventually pick up the piece they like and it's the date just, even though it's it's overshadowed by these professionals, it's a great model. It, you can't ever deny the date just as a as a watch to be looked over for what it represents. Double double zero one seven bulldog says my show is the highlight of the week. 
That's a bit over. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's a bit overstated. Granted that things have been a little slow in Bulldog land, but nonetheless, yeah, I mean, it's been the same with all of us, right? Um, I've really enjoyed the break. I must say the break does help me recharge and refresh. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm really glad everyone can just banter away, take it all in. Okay, next up, we're looking at Steve with his set of project watches. Now, we got to like a good hands-on set. Now, these these parts were all unbranded. Uh, and let's have a look. He said he picked them up from Raffles and eBay. He did specify that he doesn't like the idea of anything to be, you know, representing of a knockoff in a sense. So you don't you're not going to see any kind of Rolex rated dial. I I do appreciate that the sterile dials do do communicate that it's not trying to, you know, mirror anything. And he prefers that. So. It's good to see guys getting hands-on and making watches in their spare time. So, of course, they're, they're 1016 inspired. One's a diver with a skin diver case. The other one is more true with a Ranger handset, which is quite nice. Oh, bring back the Ranger. That should be like a, a hashtag that goes around social media, you know? Uh, extended time. Waking up and seeing the show is still going on. God, that's touching. That's hilarious. Oh, that's hilarious. I mean, we've only been running for three hours. This is still like a warm-up, you know? Um, I've never owned a casino and never will. Look at my Casio. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely divisive. I'm looking into getting an analog G-Shock. Maybe, just for the experience, you know? Got to say. And Eric's chatting about shaved his legs. I, you, I, this, I guess after three hours, the banter really does go all over the shop. So Project Watches, can always appreciate. And I'm also following a few watchmakers that I know personally, and it's great to see them in their spare time, making their own watches from all sorts of parts. So yeah, it's cool. Skin Diver case is a gem. Got to say, 60s inspired. It's a charm. Love the Skin Diver case. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? This is a time when I've always wondered, you know, they have those Explorer-inspired submariners, those Explorer dials. I find them to be so weird. They, they really make you question what is a submariner in that situation. Would recommend just look up Explorer Dial Submariner and you'll see what I mean. Some of the earliest models it really makes you scratch your head, you know. Okay, Steve, thank you for this. We're moving on to Tetley next. Now, I don't know where this came from, but this watch is crazy cool. I have never seen this in my life. Tetley just seems to bring out the big guns in this category that I have. So, this is <clears throat> Alexander Sh uh, Shorokov. That's the brand, Alexander Shorokov, German brand, made in Germany, and just a, it's a regulator watch. So you don't you have your your hours at the base here, and you have your minutes. That's so cool. So your minutes run the dial, and your hours are at the, the six. How do you read the time? It must be a bit difficult. So here we see that it's almost ten past one in the afternoon. Your date window is arranged there, as in T Hans. Yeah, that's his username. I mean, it's awesome. I love it, Tetley. Uh, yeah. So, so Bronco says, due to the bug, I've been forced to live most stir lifestyle this year. The good news is I've been able to appreciate the few watches I still own. Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of it. I mean, when in doubt, it's not, it's not about acquiring more. It's about, you know, finding more time with them and spending more time with them and thinking about what, what, what about it speaks to you. That's one of the questions that we addressed earlier on where a collector is struggling with the pieces that he picked up and not knowing where to go next so it doesn't feel satisfied you know um so, so carl says oh my that regulator's on my wish list interesting very very interesting and guys are still chatting about the lyrics stand by me and uh, that's good megan mentioning he makes some great watches i've never heard of the brand before but i, I do love the arrangement salmon dial always love curved spring bars and if we check out the movement how cool is that I mean, seriously, look at that engraving. Yeah, Tetley, I don't, your collection, I, th I think out of everyone here, your collection is the most just like out there. Some weeks he sends in Smiths, like vintage Smiths, and then he sends in these. I think he also has, um, what's the other maker? Oh, God. I can't think off the top of my head. He's, he always brings in some variety, something that does break the mold. Here's an example here. Look at the engraving. Look at the hallmark. That's his little signature there. And it looks like, I'm pretty sure this is all hand done. You might need to correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks like it's all been hand engraved. It's just excessive. Sometimes excessively cool is uh, is the way. 
Steel 316L, AR glass, Sapphire, Germany, five atmospheres. You don't want to take this in the water. Just clean, simple, arranged. Tetley, thank you always for sending these in. Okay, now we're going to look at a few more heavy hitters in the Hort Horology segment from Thomas. His uh, username is Watching World Finance. I don't know if he is in the chat. But yeah, what an amazing. Let's have a look at the engravings again. Check out the. This is cool. The barrel has been cut. This feels like this was engine turned. I don't know if it was hand done, but everything else here. Very Baroque, you know, Baroque kind of finishing with these, you know, leaf style filigrees. Uh, dare I say esoteric? Lovely for sure. <laughs> Tiger, yeah, I agree. Okay, let's carry on to Thomas. So we start with another Vacheron overseas. I mean, God, I mean, how many do they have? It's funny, right? That's it's what I find so hilarious about these shows. We've done so many of them. We've seen so much in such a short amount of time that it's like you can't say another overseas. Uh, the seeing this on the rubber strap is so awesome. Now, I think Thomas is based in the UK and great seeing the, the Land Rover in the background. This looks like he was in London. How cool is this watch for a runaround? A runaround piece, blue dial. Mark, I don't know if you're still in the chat with us, but he's really been yearning for one of these watches. And I guess it's uh, it's it's a funny thing. Whoa, ho, 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 that, careful, sorry about that, everyone. Just uh, be careful of your eyes. See, that's what I mean. The Magic Mouse is really struggling. Um, check out the texture of the jersey matches the uh, the texture of the strap. So it's it's sad that these watches are on such high demand at the moment, but I guess that's the way. Whoa, okay, I've just broken this. I really hope I haven't broken the program. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, nice defender, as mentioned. Um, CW says I went out for a bike ride and then rejoined the show. Good on you. I mean, that's what you have to do. You have to se you have to separate your time away from these shows. I mean, that's the point. You can't sit through this entirely or else uh, I am in one on order, Mark. Oh, I'm excited for you, Mark. I think you're going to love it for, for a different reason. You know, it's it's very much your, your first horology piece in the space. The question is, what are you going to do with the Sky Dweller? Because it kind of, uh, you know, it kind of kicks the Sky Dweller out in the category. Yeah, Gangster's Paradise. We take more music. It's good. We live in most of our lives. So carrying on through, Thomas, awesome. And this is another handful of shots we're going to enjoy. Uh, the frame on the date window is nice. Yeah, I agree. It's it's those tiny touches that make it a feel a lot more complete. Like there's been more attention to detail there. Again, too Vatican for some people. I love that expression. Very religious focused. Mark says has to be sold. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't fault you for that. I think this is a great uh, a great replacement for the sky dweller in this category. And you know, I would say just wear it as a daily. I think, you know, put on a rubber strap and no one would know what it is. It doesn't have the same kind of pull that the the Pateks and the APs do today. They don't have they don't gain attention. So this I mean, it is a superb one and done in this area. Not done yet, though. When Thomas was in Dubai, he was trying on this. And this is probably one of my favorites in the AP category. I love the Panda Dial. I think this is the 42 mil. Maybe it's 41. But the uh, the arrangement is awesome. Uh, yeah. What can you say? I also enjoy the, the offset date here. They've done a good job. It's just the dial and the finishing there is cool. The way that everything works with the pushes. I think these are screwed down pushes, which is nice. But the uh, the whole idea of the elements matching up with the, the the crown, with the bezel itself, with the recessed markers, yeah, it's awesome. Just take it all in for a second while I address the chat. It's amazing. I mean, the show just doesn't stop. You, you never know what's coming up next. We've still got some Universal Genevs, and we have some Seiko 5s, and then we have a Lunga coming up at the end. It's great. It never, never stops. So Thomas is congratulating you, Thomas, on the AP. So that's good. Thomas Burnett. Thomas Burnett, the king. What do we call? I think we need to give Thomas a good name in the chat. Everyone, stop talking about music references and let's give Thomas Burnett, like, he's been told, he's been, uh, tales have been told about him being the Iron Man of YouTube. But what is, uh, what are some other cool expressions that we could give him as far as, you know, his uh, dedication to the cause? It's, it's beyond belief. It's beyond human reckoning. Uh, Megan says the panda is awesome. I, I love it. I mean, I would most happily have this as my one and done Royal Oak in this category. I think it has enough differentiation next to so many others. Uh, it's awesome. Really is really cool. So I see T-Burn. That's cool. 
Watchmaster. I mean, that's another one. Yeah, go for it. Let's let's give Thomas some good accolades for what he does because he really is the most the most dedicated on this platform. I think, no doubting. No. And last but not least, from Thomas, we have another Pepsi GMT spam. I thought that was great. Uh, and I mean, this is just the way. Let's turn around here. So this is also a one six seven. I can never get these damn references right. One six seven one zero. I'm going to say again. I, I'm I'm useless with my GMT numbers. But uh, we've had a look at a couple of these here. We've had some Coke bezels. We've had the, the ceramics. We've had uh, root beers. We've had the full spectrum. It's been quite Rolex heavy. It's fascinating. These shows you can never tell. <laughs> ninety minute, ninety percent meat. I love it. I mean, this is just the way. This is just so pure so english to the core you know um yeah carrying on next thomas thank you for sending these in and any other cool the gent it's a goodie the colombo of the watch world yeah it's awesome it is awesome uh, yes that's the pinnacle panda at the moment yeah 73 math it does i mean would you have this or would you have a ceramic daytona i mean realistically this this is the way this is awesome i love it it's it's so casual too, which is also really nice. It's so under the radar for what it is. Uh, I guess the telltale sign is the bracelet, but other than that, it's sports piece. Okay, moving on to Tyco. Now we have featured vintage pocket watches before, so Thomas. But I love that. That is cool. That is really cool. Yeah, man, give him a title. What the hell? We should knight him on the channel. How do we do that? That's one way. Um, so this is Tyco's grandfather's Zenith pocket watch from. Hold it. 1945. Always love a good pocket watch story. So we have Breguet hands, Breguet numerals. Glass is shattered, but that's just the beauty of it. And it's still going. I mean, this is funny how pocket watches have, have gone over time. And how they've pretty much disappeared. And how you get pocket watch conversions. And yeah, it's awesome. It really is. And this hobby just doesn't stop. I saw something here, veteran. Spam can makes that Pepsi a World War II veteran. Roof Tiger. Yeah, yeah. By this time of the evening, the chats really go all over the show. And that's that's the joy. Uh, nice arrangement. I mean, so typical of the Breguet inspiration. Isn't it incredible how the Breguet inspiration trickled into so many brands? Like the Breguet numerals. Bre that, like, just skip the line and go Breguet. Pick up one of those watches as your horterology piece just because of how significant it is and how it impacted the world. Look at those twos. I mean, you're right. I was just about to say, how crazy is that? They're like, they're curled in on themselves. It's got the, you know, the, the 50s, um, what do they call them? Teddy boy. It's, call them the Teddy boy Breguet numerals. Yeah, that's how we're doing it. The Teddy boy hairstyle right there. Yeah, it's cool. Really is slick. Look at the seven. There's another example. That's like, what do you call that? Like the Johnny Bravo style. I don't know. You got even organic, really. It's amazing. Got to say. When, and then we go back to the whole beautification argument again. Watch collecting a healthy addiction. We haven't even addressed that subject during the show, but what the hell. Here's an example of beautification in the simplest way. Um, why do they even bother with a six? <laughs> I mean, that's such a good point, Nathaniel. That is that is hilarious. I didn't even notice it. That's how pathetic it is. It really is. It's just dumb. They should they should have a, a circle here and that just a, a hobnail and be done with it. That is so bad. Pregnant seven. That is so good. B dev. I mean, there we go. Tilt it to the side. God, that's funny. Also, it looks like a stomach, wouldn't you say? If you know your anatomy. <laughs> uh, I tell you, we have fun. We do have fun sometimes here. Next from Tycho is a Zin 104. Walking a golden retriever. I am biased. I do love my goldens. And I forget to mention that Tycho is a 20-year-old student. And for a 20-year-old student, this is such a good way to start. I mean, I love it. I wish, I wish YouTube was the resource it is now when I was 18. You know, I missed the boat, sadly. Uh, looks like my gut exactly flipping the zipper. That's so funny. Uh, pregnant second seven. Where do you come up with this stuff? You guys, I tell, I tell you what, you always keep me on the ball. Yeah. So this is the reverse, the reverse style. I think this is the only Zen we've seen. I was chatting about beautification and the typefaces. Look how they arrange the automatic. It's stunning. It's really nice. And as far as a an navigation navigation piece, this is it. This is the way to do it. Yeah. Should do more videos on Zen. I think I will actually. I uh, I need to sp focus in a lot more onto the uh, certain lines that are the most appealing, and yeah, many many others. 
what oh, oh magic mouse what a, how how about it truth truth seers i think the way they do this text is just gorgeous i think that's what you're asking um the the, the cursive font here is just it's so elegant and it's something that you can look at and admire on a dial um yeah Anyway, we're doing pretty well. Three hours, 20 minutes. I'm going to carry on through to the last few pieces. Tycho, thank you for sending this in. As a 20-year-old, you've got a lot at your disposal with this kind of platform. Just enjoy it. Take it all in. Absorb this hobby. Speaking of syringe hands, we just saw a <laughs> Z-Pig in blankets. Uh, we just saw that with a Zin. We're jumping back to another Hamilton khaki, thanks to Valeria. I don't know if you're watching us, Valeria, but... Uh, based in scotland and he sent in some cool shots he's also a youngster and i mean this is one way to start hamilton automatic red accent there we actually featured this very early on a similar model and what else do you need going for a walk in the snow hell scotland has been pelted with snow <laughs> uh the zin is getting a great deal of attention yeah i'm not sure why as so many other models in the zin range look much more appealing if it was me i would be getting the zin with the, the numerals on the dial the 104 there's a couple of examples the 103 is the chronograph i think but then again if you really were to hard press me i'd be looking at you know the easy m's the ux i know they're probably a lot more expensive for what they do but they also do speak to zin as this really hardcore built for purpose built for military personnel i'd love to get my hands on one actually uh the u what are they called the u50 i think just great 80s inspirations for days and it's it's stunning have a look Look at Zin EZM or Zin UX or anything else online there. You'll find some cool stuff. Would recommend. Um, people are just going nuts for Panda Dials. Yeah, I agree. I sure do agree. And there's a good talk about Hamilton's as a brand kind of lose their way because they seem very clued up with the whole idea of a field watch and they, they incorporate it into virtually everything they make. So, yeah, it's worth addressing. Maybe that could be a video subject one day. But love the shots, Valeria. Beautiful. I mean, nothing better than fresh snow. Uh, Hans saying 156. Is this your prediction? I'm loving it. So this is like a bet you guys have on when the show is going to end. 154. You guys, are, you guys are dicks. I love it. So next to Victor. Uh, okay. This is cool. I think this is one of the last, one of the last shots I saved uh, yesterday. It's great. Uh, so this is Universal Genève. Uh oh. Here we go. <sighs> Ferrovie dello Stato, Ferrovie dello Stato, enamel dial, SF at the back, standing for Ferrovie dello Stato, uh, and I can't remember what it what it what it meant. I didn't save it. There. Sorry, I just saved that description, but it has to do with a company, and that was that was as close as I got. Sorry about that. It was early in the morning when I saved the shots, and uh, yeah, it's good. Stunning piece though. We were chatting about the. At the very beginning of the show, the Universal, was it Universal? No, it was um, Junghans, then the Max Bill kind of approach. And here's another example of how these pieces can be addressed very simply. Kind of a 60s style uh, skin diver case, you know. Uh, some effective hands, I mean, they're beautiful. What would you call them? They're not gladius hands, they're pencil hands in, in the purest sense, I'd say. Uh, wafer thin, uh, one wafer thin mint. I don't know what that reference is, but it's great. Also love how they've done the type here and the, and the logo and all of that there. I think these elements are also raised. The, the numerals are raised off the dial, which is clean. Really does clear up the dial a bit more. Yeah, it's just it's just there, simple. And there is an engraving on the back. I think an SF gra engraving there that, that uh, adds to the uh, tie. I think it was a collaboration project. Maybe it was automotive linked. I can't remember. The email came in and I just saved it. Um, I'm not normally a fan of mesh. I mean, it does kind of speak to the watch. I agree. Um, also, I'm not much of a fan of it either, but uh, some models, especially one like this, where it's very 60s inspired, it feels true to form. Um, <laughs> Mark, it's good. Field watch is all Hamilton does. Rest of the line is confused. I mean, that's, that's a good point, Bobin. And I'm missing, missing all of you here in the chat. Uh, again, Italian art, railroad watch. We watch guy. Wisconsin watch guys, always good having you at the end of the show. Thank you. So this has to do with the railroad watch. Okay, I'm, I'm getting it like that. I think that rings a bell. That does. Would you please put the name of the watch in the chat? I'll try. Let's go for it. This, this is a challenge. Huh. Let's see. I'm going to try and touch type without looking at my hands. Ferrovi dello Stato. Nah, got it. 
I think. Take that and uh, copy and paste that. I detest mesh brazier. It's too shiny. Forbin, I think they do have their merits depending on the application. You know, like uh, the shark mesh is good in the sea. I think it has it has its own place. But then look at uh, Tesuflex. I've harped on about Tesuflex bracelets a lot. They are incredible. Stretchy, comfortable. I went out of business because they were just too damn expensive to make. Uh, yeah, yeah. My pleasure, Andreas. I hope I, I'm pretty sure I spot that right. Again, touch type in. Um, okay, moving through to Ziraha, which is one of the last submissions. And then we get to our man, Russell. I don't know if he's awake. I'm pretty sure Russell has fallen asleep by now. This is a Seiko 5. It's a mess of a Seiko 5. And his father-in-law bought it in the 1980s when he was involved in international freight shipping. So this watch really saw the brink. You could see how damaged it is, how used it's been. And he went along the way of restoring the watch, restoring the crystal, and brought it back to life. And check out how cool that dial is. This reminds me of a board game. I'm trying to remember what it is. But how crazy is that? I mean, we go from that to life. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This is a really, it's a really nice way to cap off the show, you know. I don't know I don't know the history of Seiko 5s. Again, I've never been a Seiko follower in in a sense. I've it's never been it's something it's a brand that sort of flew over my head when I started in the hobby and once you start down the rabbit the rabbit hole, the grubbit hole, as I've said once in a show, uh, there's just no stopping and here's an example. Seiko 5s were just accessible pieces that got people into the hobby in many ways. A dartboard, I mean that's that's a good example, yeah. Very trippy. It is. I mean, it's cool. Gilted, gilted hands and everything there. And I just love it. The case is also really cool. Blends nicely with the with the strap. And you also sent in a side angle profile shot. Isn't that nice how they recess the crown there too? And I see that uh I see that Russell is still with us. That's good. Can have an enjoyment, some more some pieces in a second. And Eric says, How did you do that? <clears throat> I don't know if it's, he was here in the beginning of the show. I think I put him to sleep about an hour in, but uh, be nice for you, for you to comment in the in the description, comment below Ziraha about this watch and how you managed to restore it from that to that. I mean, it's also on the Saturday, isn't that cool? Looks like the movement's also busted. So he pretty much had the full thing restored. Yeah, it's awesome. Really nice bit of story there. I like that it's also, imagine what his father-in-law must have thought seeing the watch fully restored again. I mean, that's pretty, pretty special. Okay, so last but not least, we jump to Russell. And uh, Russell was very kind in picking up, in the, in the two-minute interval when the commandos went up for sale, he picked up a commando, and I think it arrived this week. And he shared this shot, which I thought was pretty cool because I think the main reason why he did it was because the hands speak the same kind of language. And uh, another Zeppelin length show, Mark. It's great. It's great. Except I'm not on drugs. Actually, no, technically I am, you know, I am on a, my, my liver is getting absolutely destroyed. Okay. I take that back. I'm sweating like Jimmy Page right now. Um, uh, and I'm also wearing super restrictive trousers. Yeah. So... The 24 ringtone, I like that. That is that is pretty funny. So, uh, oops, come back. So this is the 6007, right? I never get this reference. <clears throat> You're not the only one, 0017. I was commando all day today, Saturday. Um, and the Thomas, super chat. Thank you for that, Thomas. Shout out. Okay, huge shout out. Let's go. I'm going to read this in one breath. Are you ready? Shout out to Megan, Flip and Zippo, Eric, Hansi, Mark P, Wonder of Watches, Ben, Blue Shirt, Forbin, 73 Math, Brent, Jr., and everyone else who joined. Ah, oh, gotta love it. Thank you, Thomas. I guess that's the benefit that I've never touched a cigarette in my life. I can hold my breath pretty good. Yeah, great. It's great. Yeah, sweating like Jimmy Page, trying to tune the double neck. And when he played, um, oh, what was that tune that he played? You've got, there's live footage of him playing there. Why even wearing pants? Nathaniel, that is the question. I find that constricted pants, you know, gets gets you a little bit more uh, in tune. You know, it kind of like keeps you more alert, if that makes sense. If I shift the wrong way, I feel it and it wakes me up. You know, it's kind of like torture, but it's good. So I love seeing this comparison. We have on the one side a 300 pound watch and here, I, I don't even know what these are going for now. They're like 80 grand, whatever else there. Handle, isn't that it, Hans? I'm pretty sure that's the that's the tune he played. 
non-hacking Patek, poor sink. Yeah, Russell, that's the downside. I mean, I had a laugh on Instagram. Someone said better than a Patek. And I, I commented back saying, yeah, it can hack. <laughs> so funny. But Thomas, yeah, as Eric says, such a gent. Thank you for the super chat, Thomas. And to all of you who have literally sat down and listened to me talk for three and a half hours, I mean, I can't. <laughs> it's, it's too much for me to take in, but uh, I love this. I think the reason why he took the shot was just to capture the handset and seeing that dis disparity. I don't know. Is this a 6007? I can't even get the reference of this model right, but it's stainless steel and it was made to commemorate an opening of a boutique uh, I can never remember all that. Uh, anyway, wonder if watches. Cheers, Thomas. Why am I still awake? Thoroughly enjoyable. That's too much. Now you're making me blush. Wonder of watches. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a good time. Uh, the variety is always, but we're not done yet because it is the tenth anniversary of the Zeitwerk. We're not finished. Hold on. Hold on a sec. We're nice, Frederick Constant. <laughs> <Mr. Marcus. laughs> uh, we're not done yet because we deserve to. Yeah, Nick. We're still going. We are still going. Uh, we are going to have a look at, hmm, what should we look at first? Okay, let's look at some anti-reflective coding. So because it's 2021, this is what I, I assume. I didn't fully understand the email, Russell, I'll, I'll admit. But this is based, you know, 2021, it's the 10th anniversary of the Zeitwerk, one of the most complicated movements they've ever made. And, you know, last year they nailed it. I think the first time they've ever done a minute repeating Zeitwerk, which was last year, if I remember right. And this is your phantom. If the phantom is still watching, uh, this is a phantom of the of the longer. I think they call it the phantom. Three hours in, like my brain's all over the shop. So, what I like about this watch is the just the, the way that anti-reflective coating works in the lighting, and it's just a crazy beast. I mean, where do you start? Russell did send me a video clip of this watch turning over at midnight, and I should have saved it. I really should have, but I, I didn't. And uh, it's an am amazing. I mean, just imagine all of these loomed elements moving at once in tandem as it flicks over to 12. It's quite something to behold. I would, I can actually imagine this watch keeps Russell up at night. He fully looms the watch, lies in bed, and just watches those numbers move around the dial. It's probably quite addictive. Phantom says, still here. Great to have you. Uh, I can imagine it must be very intoxicating seeing these numerals flicking over in the dark every single the funny thing is how crazy it all looks here and that was the approach you want to see the full movement behind the, the transparent glass it's a lovers or hated thing but the fully loom numerals that go in here i think it's just charming and i think i understand the reason why this was done it kind of makes sense uh you want when it comes to looming the watch if it's not transparent you're not going to loom all the numerals in one take right that's that's the idea at least i think from a practicality sense it kind of makes sense so if this if this dial was actually flat with no transparency or opacity you wouldn't be able to loom everything else behind there so uh, i guess that's the reason why they did it i don't know chaos and then order i know i know and don't worry we're gonna have a look at movements in a moment uh should we look at the presentation uh, presentation shot here's another one i mean yeah russell does take some good photographs ladies and gentlemen and uh, he has a superb collection. I can't wait for lockdown to end because Russell is literally like, I don't even think he's 40 miles away from me up the road. And to get some experience seeing these, the best I've ever experienced is a platinum datagraph. I mean, a platinum datagraph. I'm joking. Uh, it's amazing. But uh, it's just, it's so cool seeing this watch in its, uh, on the wrist of an owner. And uh, he has a very interesting taste. Russell started with what I love. He started with uh, Elise Nadan. He had like 10 at one stage and then just decided one night to sell all of them. And he's now dipped his toes into Lunga. He's owned lots of Pateks and uh, it's nuts. Yeah, I agree. So what should we look at next? The movement. How about that? Uh, there is, uh, Russell, please tell me the move, the amount of parts. I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of 600 parts to this movement. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I think I'm getting there. 670 something. Or maybe I'm thinking of a fusé and chain. Hmm. Junior Johnson, shout out to, shout out to Thomas Burnett. Yes, absolutely. Thomas Burnett does deserve the shout out. Junior, and for you to watch and join in and being here the whole time, I, I appreciate it so much, really. Uh, Russell doesn't have an idea. How can you not know this, Russell? You have all the books. You should know the stuff. That's funny. Um, but these, yeah, again, the what made this, I've said this like virtually every time featuring this watch, uh, 
this is the, the most complicated movement they made up until then because uh, it's so difficult as, as much as it's easy to look like to just get that that analog what am i saying the digital arrangement it looks easy to do but it was one of the hardest things they've ever tried and it took them like three years of development and lots of collaboration and uh, to get it done and uh, yeah it's just superb a real real monster huge mainspring the barrel i mean how long does i don't even know how long the power reserve is russell uh it's like it's like it's only like 36 hours or something no um yeah and i don't want to spill the beans but russell's got a surprise for all of us in the next few months i think once the world opens up russell will be on a plane somewhere to pick up something pretty special but uh we'll save that for another time i look forward to debut it this is a plat by the way a platinum i should have mentioned the phantom the phantom in platinum just kind of it kind of makes sense there you know 528 parts okay that's close 600 ish that's this is nuts. This is so cool. Not done yet. I think we have one more shot to cap off the show, and it's that. That's it in the sunlight. How cool is that? It has such an interesting aesthetic, you know? Um, Andreas says the Zeitwerk miniature repeater movement is 771. That's crazy here. Huh? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of extra stuff that to do. I mean, Russell was one of the first to try it, <clears throat> excuse me, to try them on in, in London. And, um, uh, I think the watch was too big for him, size-wise. Um, Twelve has more parts than a twelve-cylinder Jaguar engine. Yeah, it's cool seeing this watch in the uh, in the light, don't you say? And I always try to like think about what this watch is representing, and it does show this clear divide between modern and you know, grandfather clock. You know, green stitching. Yeah, Eric, that's that's this is the standard strap it comes with. How cool is that? Hold on a sec. Russell also has the Datagraph Phantom, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah, you do. And they both come with the strap. It's just so quirky and out there. I, I do love, I do love your taste, Russell, about this uh, arrangement. Oh, it's too expensive. That's why you. Okay, okay. I thought it was down to the size and the thickness of the watch that was a bit of an issue. But yeah, the green matches the loom, and I guess that was the whole approach. But isn't it fascinating when you think about this watch and what it tries to represent when it came out? It kind of raised a few eyebrows. It most definitely was Lunga's stamp on their watchmaking and their development. But then it also shows this traditionalist approach that feels kind of modern. It gives you that, that look of a, a Rolls-Royce Bugatti sort of feel where it's classical. It has that, that classical past, but it's also looking to the future and the furtherments. Yeah, having a Bentley and Rolls-Royce. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, such a fascinating watch. So this show has been all over the place, from Seiko 5s to Lunga Phantoms and everything in between. It's just it's just never ending. Uh, I'm so used to like you, Russell. <laughs> yeah, Russell has a cool collection, i got to say. Uh, he he uh, I love his taste. It's very specific. Um, and I can't wait to debut the watch that's coming. It's going to be really exciting. Because that one really is. I mean, we talk about the grail of grails. Yeah, it's it's in that ballpark. It's that category. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been three, oh, that's a three hours 40. I'm actually going to close before you guys who are placing the bet on the show. Uh, you know, I'm actually going to beat you all and beat you by five minutes. How's that? It's been an awesome time, as always. Um, I'm really enjoying these sub four hour shows. It feels... Uh, Stop share screen. It really feels cathartic that we're not going so far into the <laughs> keep going on. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. Uh, it really does feel cathartic that we're not going to the Russell. Yeah. Well, we're beyond, we're going to be beyond 140 at this point. But uh, yeah, it's been a good time. I've spent all of last week preparing a video, which is going to be a, a good time looking at bezels and their complications. And it's actually, it's funny enough, it's, it's design oriented. Like it's an industrial designer talking about the value of Bakelite and the value of ceramic and co and forged carbon and aluminium. So it's it's kind of a science lesson in a way. And I thought it was going to be hella boring when I started recording it, but then I thought, you know what? What the hell? Let's see what happens. So yeah, that'll be next week. I think around Thursday. And then yeah, I got some cool, some really interesting videos lined up. Design design exercises and everything in between. But. Uh, for all of you who have joined, who've been a part of the show, who have actually sat and listened to me for, God knows, three hours, 40 minutes, and you're still here, 
I commend you. <laughs> you do. 73 math. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I really hope you're all well and taking this year one step at a time. I can't believe it's March already. And it's, it's freaking ridiculous. Us in the Northern Hemisphere, we've got a cool summer to look forward to, which is great. And yeah, so hopefully things start opening up and we get a bit more freedom to ourselves and we can get out and enjoy ourselves. But uh, yeah, all I can do is remain your humble servant, present whatever is given to me, some great suggestions, some great emails have come in asking questions about subjects. And uh, again, I have to, have to say to all of you, thank you for contributing to these shows. These live shows wouldn't be anything without you sending in your watches, your submissions and uh, yeah, Megan's putting another drop in for the store. Take some time and have a look at it. I do need to sit down and work through it. I need to take a good three weeks off and just develop some some better address pieces overall. But uh, yeah, you guys, you guys are legends. I can't believe you can sit and listen to me for so long. I hope there was something good in the show. I don't know. Alcohol and coffee. It's a beautiful combination. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, as always. See you next week. And the next show will probably be two weeks' time, three weeks' time. I don't know. But uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. Have an excellent Sunday. And as always, see you in the next one.